Well, hello everyone. Hi. Thanks for joining me today. Once again over here on the purple website. Hope you've had a lovely day so far. Happy Pokemon Day, apparently. I only just realized today was Pokemon Day. I'm just now scanning the internet to see, did anything major happen? And apparently, uh, there was a Pokemon Presents today. I don't really know what was revealed or shown off yet, but whatever, I'll find out later. Hi. We're not concerning ourselves with new Pokemon today. We're concerning ourselves with some of the oldest Pokemon to be had. I hope you're all having a lovely day. A new Legends game. Excellent. That's great news. I'm very happy they're continuing to explore the Pokemon Legends idea. Because I feel like that concept was pretty strong out the gate. But we're playing Pokemon Yellow today. Getting that started. Again, people who have been around for a long time, some of whom are resubscribing, and I'll thank you in a moment, uh, will know that we started playing Pokemon Yellow like a year and a half ago. A little bit. But I think we're just going to start fresh this time. We didn't get that far. I don't even know if we got to the second gym. I don't think we did. <laughs> we didn't get far. And now this is part of a larger effort. So we will begin anew. It has been a while, huh? But hey, thank you for the 18 months, seven sunless days. That, that should constitute... I feel like you might have a new... Uh, subscriber badge for that. I think you do. I think that's when a new flavor kicks in. Every half year at this point. Is that the mint flavoring I'm seeing right now? I think it is. Been a while since we made those. <laughs> but thank you, Seven Sunless Days. Also, thank you, T.S. Terrapin. And also Ashton. A lot of you getting 18 months today, including Naru Hoodie, and also Malkroth. Congrats on a year and a half being purple. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for all that time. Thank you as well, Ramdom01. 18 months. Can't believe it. I know. I agree. Thank you for the 18 months as well, Iskarja Rock. Already a year and a half. That's almost a year. We're getting there. Thanks for that gifted sub there, Kasha Golene. Thanks for the 18 months, Arta Matthew, and also Baha Bali. Thank you all for joining me. It's going to be a good time. I'm very excited to get to Gen 1, but with color. <laughs> and also with a Pikachu following you around disapprovingly. I think it's going to be all the fun we've had previously, but more. Now, before we actually do get started, there is one thing that I feel like needs to be hang on. Well, first, we need to thank Ramdom for gifting 10 subs, which is very generous and kind. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Ramdom. It's lovely of you. Too kind. But yes, there is a thing we need to clarify and sort out, I feel, before we can officially get started, and it concerns pronunciation of Pokemon names. Now, normally, I've been known to mispronounce a thing or two here and there. This is not a new occurrence. But this is one of those occurrences where I've had it. I'm hearing that I'm pronouncing one wrong, but I can't understand how. So we're going to we're going to work on this. We're going to sort this out together, and I'm going to need some of y'all's opinions here. Consider this little fellow here. Now, I need for all of you to consider kind of in your head, how do you think that name is pronounced? Oh, 
This can <laughs> good gracious, Bahabali. That's 25 subs you're gifting. <laughs> I know we're all swept up in the excitement of the hype train, but good gracious. Thank you very much. That's incredibly generous. Enjoy the emotes, everyone, including the new shock emote just added like a week ago. We're gonna have some more of those coming. We're, I'm gonna get some more emotes going over the coming week, so that should be fun. Anyway, the this this Pokemon, I see a bunch of you making some guesses at it. Um, and that, uh, like that, that's very good. I look at this, and apparently I am hearing from some that I am pronouncing this one wrong, and I need to understand how, if so. So now if I look at this Pokemon name here, I see a portmanteau of uh, the word growl, as in to gur, <laughs> and also the word lithe, which is a like a descriptor to say like athletic looking, slender, fit, that sort of thing, combined as growl lithe. That makes sense to me. If it is not that, if it is not pronounced growl lithe, then apparently that is a portmanteau with something else. And I need to understand what the word, what the second word is. I've, see, I've seen someone insisting that it is Growlithe. And I'm willing to take their word on that, perhaps. Like, uh, like I don't know how it is pronounced in the anime. It is very possible that it is pronounced Growlithe, or Growlithe, even, in the anime. But I... Or Growlithe. Even that, though, doesn't make a whole tons of sense to me, because what word is it combining with? The word, we have the word, it's pronounced lithe. Lithe is pronounced lithe. In the UK and the US, this isn't even a case of, like, a difference between the two. Uh, like, the Brits say it one way, Americans say it another. Everyone says it lithe. That's the official pronunciation. So, if, like... Frankly, even if in the anime, the characters pronounce it Growlithe, or even I kind of feel like Growlithe, I'm I'm less bothered by Growlithe, but even that one, I feel like, no, I'm I'm sorry, just I'm sorry that the anime is pronouncing the Pokemon's name wrong. But we're combining two actual words here. Growlithe. Growlithe is correct by the anime. Then I'm really fascinated as to what the, they think the second word is that they're combining there. Because I'm kind of, like, I'm drawing a blank on that one. I get, okay, well, so let's, let's come at this a different direction. The evolution of this Pokemon. Uh, should that be... How does the uh, anime pronounce that one? Is it Arcanine or Arcanine? How do that? How do they go about that? Do they emphasize the second A or the first? They emphasize the first. All right. Which is or like so they emphasize the first A, Arcanine, which is also an odd choice, right? Because like, what words are we portmanteauing there? Arcane and Canine. Arcanine. Arcanine. Arcanine is like fundamentally changing the pronunciation of both words involved. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> I feel like modern I feel like modern Pokemon is better about kind of establishing this logic up front with the nicknaming of these things. I'm, I'm less bothered for whatever reason by Growlithe than Growlithe. Growlithe is like, definitely no. <laughs> I refuse. And even, I feel like, fine if the anime uh, or official handbook or whatever give a pronunciation that does not match the words that they are combining for the name. But I don't think anyone should get slack for using those proper pronunciations because 
I mean, they're real words. It's like, it's like Nier Automata. Just because the creator of Nier Automata pronounces it automata does not mean that you have to. It's a, it's we, it's a word we have already. We have a pronunciation for that word. It's Nier Automata. I'm sorry, Mr. Taro. <laughs> it's like, like, we wouldn't take it seriously if Square Enix came out tomorrow and said, like, hey, y'all, just so y'all know, like, it's... Like, the title of our franchise is Final Fantasy. And you're really all saying it wrong. We'd appreciate it if you would change that. We would all say, no, I'm sorry. We, that's a word we have already. You can't just change it. Actually, guys, it's pronounced Banjo-Kazooie. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, they did try to, They, I guess they did do that with Kate Sith, which is also infuriating. <laughs> but for additional reasons. <laughs> anyway, I, sorry, I got a little distracted there. And uh, Ramdom gifted 20 more subs, which is absurd. Y'all are getting out of hand with this. <laughs> Thank you very much. And now Maymele is doing the same thing. We haven't even started yet. I've only just, I've just been complaining about Pokemon name pronunciation. Here, I'll get that off screen. <laughs> You're all, you are all too generous and kind, though. I haven't earned this yet. <laughs> Thank you for the 18 months, Star Tracings. And also Alchemist. Alchemist 80, rather. And Landis Maximus. Thank you for the 16 months, Wicker Guide. It's Growls and it's Lithe, meaning Lean and Agile, so Growl Lithe. Thank you. Thank this is what I'm saying. <laughs> But thank you very much, all of you. You're too kind. And thank you, Rubik Darkwill, for the 18 months. You're all lovely. <laughs> it's like the person who invented the gif saying it's pronounced jif, like the peanut butter. Yeah, now, like, we can all, as a community, agree to reject this. <laughs> like, I do agree that the person who comes up with the thing, or the owner of the concept or the whatever, should get priority and should get to uh, establish the name and the pronunciation, but we do have veto rights, <laughs> collectively. The words and letters do what we tell them at the end of the day. Oh yeah, I'd see with Arceus or Arceus or Arceus, that with that Pokemon name, I couldn't even begin to tell you. I don't know. Because that one seems like, okay, I can see that going several ways. In Japanese, the Pokemon's name is Gardi, sort of like Gadi, which I think, which I think is also, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think it is meant to sort of imply like guard dog, like a cute way of saying guard. Uh, a cutified version of uh, the word guard, which is great because then like it's like a little tiny Kamainu. It's very just little cute folklore guard dog. That's that's a, also a very good name for Growlithe. The Pokemon company started trying to avoid this after the Rayquaza debate. The way I say it is Rayquaza, while the official pronunciation is more like Rayquaza. Yeah, but, but and that's another one where I could sort of see, like, okay, until the, somebody goes in and clarifies, I could see that go in several different ways. Now, Arceus is one where even the anime says it differently in multiple instances, but all right, which, who can blame them? It's a hard one. <laughs> anyway, that's enough language complaining for now. There will be time for all of that more later. Thank you for the 18 months, Vanya Loswin. And on that note, apologies for any of y'all's names who I say wrong. Uh, but we've got Pokemon to play. We have a Pikachu we have to make love us.
Goodness, y'all were too entirely too kind with this hype train here. <laughs> Out of control. But all right, we swap over. Let's play some Pokemon, y'all. We are going to have a good time. I know, a level 9 hype train. I, that You don't see that every day. <laughs> level 10? Goodness gracious. Uh, what a wonderful time we're going to have with our wonderful little bit crushed Pikachu. Hey, thanks for the... 18 months, Midnight Skyas. Are we ready? I recently got a sprite, and I'm even more amazed at how much magic those people do with a few pixels. It's really amazing, isn't it? This is the kind of stream you need to die tonight with how stressful it's been lately. I'm happy to provide. Sorry about the stress. I think a lot of us can relate, but, uh... <laughs> My sympathy is all the same. Let's get this game started. And this time we're finishing it. We're beating it all the way through. Not like Pokemon Blue. We're doing it. I must answer the most burning of Pokemon questions. Fat Pikachu or Thin Pikachu? I think every form of Pikachu has been pretty enjoyable thus far. Current on-model Pikachu. I mean, I think it'd be very hard to argue that that is not an excellent Pikachu design. It rules the world right now, and has for decades. But the original kind of off-model, chunky Pikachu, also exquisite. Perhaps even more exquisite for its, like, rarity. It feels like one of those, like a misprint, <laughs> in a way. Which makes it all the more special. But okay. We begin. Ex exciting colors and everything. Hello there! Welcome to the world of Pokemon. My name is Oak. People call me the Pokemon Prof. This world is inhabited by creatures called Pokemon. I need to turn up the text speed again. For some people, Pokemon are pets. Others use them for fights. Myself, I study Pokemon as a profession. First, what is your name? What is my name? You know, this time, since Pokemon Yellow is so... Like, is adhering so intentionally to the anime, Ash and Gary feels correct this time. We will deviate from our usual plan. This is the most default thing. We're going with default names, henceforth. And this is the most default name we could possibly do for Pokemon Yellow. Here we go. Right, so your name is Ash. This is my grandson. He's been your rival since you were a baby. Uh, what is his name again? There's something about declaring, hearing from an elder that this friend of yours, who is, like, their grandson has been your rival since birth. It almost makes it sound like betrothal, but with rivalry. Anyway, it's Gary. That's right, I remember now. His name's Gary. Ash! Your very own Pokémon legend is about to unfold. A world of dreams and adventures with Pokémon awaits. Let's go! An arranged nemesis? Yep, that's a good term for it. <laughs> I like it. Okay, let's mess with those settings, though. We need some faster text speed. Thank you. On, good, fine, and love it. Okay. We're ready. Ash is playing the SNES. Okay, time to go. This, even just this limited palette, is already such a huge addition. Loving it. Right, all boys leave home someday. It said so on TV. Professor Oak next door is looking for you. Got it.
So charming. So for those of you who do not know, Pokemon Yellow is basically the exact same as Pokemon Blue and Red in like 95% of ways, but it has been, it's sort of like a slightly plus one version. It's been uh, updated with some elements from the anime, given how popular the anime was. So there will be a few key differences, but other than that, it is the same game. Technology is incredible. You can now store and recall items and Pokemon as data via PC. We're in the future, man. Yo, Ash! Gramps isn't around. I ran here because he said he had a Pokemon for me. Only one on the table this time. I guess I'm off. Hey, wait! Don't go out! That was close. Wild Pokemon live in tall grass. And this is a little different too. Wild Pikachu appeared. Professor Oak used Pokeball. All right, Pikachu was caught. <laughs> Good use of the emote, everyone. <laughs> Whew. A Pokemon can appear any time in tall grass. You need your own Pokemon for your protection. I know. Here, come with me. I love that they do actually show the professor catching the Pikachu in this moment that already exists in the game. That's a clever way to uh, present the change. Gramps, I'm fed up with waiting. Hmm? Gary? Why are you here already? I said for you to come by later. Ah, oh, whatever. Just wait there. Look, Ash. You see that ball on the table? It's called a Pokeball. It holds a Pokemon inside. You may have it. Go on, take it. Hey, Gramps, what about me? Be patient, Gary. I'll give you one later. I'm the favorite already, and I'm not even related. Speaking of adhering to the anime in yellow, there's a 1% chance of encountering Pidgeotto in Viridian Forest since Ash caught one in the anime. That's really cute. I love that. <laughs> no way. Ash, I want this Pokemon. Gary snatched the Pokemon. Gary, what are you doing? Gramps, I want this one. But I... All right, then. That Pokemon is yours. I was going to give you one anyway. Ash, come over here. Ash, this is the Pokemon I caught earlier. You can have it. I caught it in the wild, and it's not tame yet. Ash received a Pikachu. Do you want to give a nickname to Pikachu? Henceforth, no. Anyway, <laughs> that's the end of that dialogue. Uh, hey, thanks for the 12 months, Kaloguru, and also the 18 months, Dragon Lady. Thanks to both of you. Hey, my Pokemon looks a lot stronger. We shall see, won't we? Wait, Ash, let's check out our Pokemon. Come on, I'll take you on. Gary wants to fight. You got an Eevee, even. The versatility. I don't remember, and I'm kind of excited to relearn. Does Gary ever evolve his Eevee into something using a stone, or does it remain an Eevee? And if he evolves it, which one? In modern... If they were doing this in modern... A modern uh, Pokemon game... I would love it if they did something cool where, like, the Eevee he evolves... The form he evolves his Eevee into is based on... Like, it is built to counter you. Like, whatever Pokemon is you have that is, like, type strongest, he chooses something that will counter it. That would rule. They do do that? It kind of is. Wow, that's not, that's honestly fancier than I expected them to do on a Game Boy. So, okay, so it is based on the player's action somehow, but 
I don't know what the criteria are. That's co that's cool though. Hooray! What? Unbelievable! I picked the wrong Pokemon. Give me your money. Okay, I'll make my Pokemon. Okay, I'll make my Pokemon fight to toughen it up. Ash, Gramps, smell you later. <laughs> I forgot how funny it is that the way Gary's music plays so briefly while he's walking off screen and then immediately cuts off again. <laughs> I'm delighted by it all over again. The what? Oh, did you look at that? It's odd, but it appears that your Pikachu dislikes Pokeballs. You should just keep it with you. That should make it happy. You can talk to it and see how it feels about you. Is that so? Unimpressed. Well, we just got to know each other. So in this version, we have a Pikachu from the start instead of choosing one of the three starters, and the Pikachu will follow us around, like in the anime. This is an objective improvement. <laughs> Pikachu doesn't think so yet, but they will. So all right, we're ready to begin our adventure. I forget, can we get a map yet? Or is that now till later? Hi, Ash. Gary is out at Grandpa's lab. That's not till later. It's after we run the errand. Ah, the color has changed because we've moved into a different zone. Obviously, we're still operating with very few colors here. On the Game Boy Color. So really only... <laughs> it seems like kind of two additional colors to work with at a time. Still, though. Having a different color palette for every area you go. Quite nice. Okay, so here's here's the official word. From Sarah B. The final evolution of Eevee, uh, Gary's Eevee will take depends on the first few battles you have with him. He'll get a Jolteon if you beat him in the lab and on Route 22, a Flareon if you win the battle at the lab only, and a Vaporeon if you lose the battle at the lab and the one on Route 22 or pass it up. That makes sense, because if you lose twice to him, then they then he evolves the Eevee into a form that your Pikachu will be strongest against. Well, if you beat him both times, though, he has a Jolteon, which your Pikachu will be least effective against. That makes a lot of sense. Like, it's less complex than what they could do now, but uh, I do also kind of like that it is based on the assumption that Pikachu is your main. And why wouldn't Pikachu be? Pikachu is the only one who can follow you around, and you're playing Pokemon Yellow. That's really cool. What a good game. Let's be a little bit more like animation hunty this time too, right? So like, it is more or less the same game, the biggest edition, the big, maybe the only animation edition, or the only animation editions are all centered on Pikachu as your starter and follower. So now Pikachu has a world level sprite that can exist and walk in different directions, which is really cute several different simple animations that can play based on how happy Pikachu is with you. Also, and this one is incredible, and I'd never known about it until we were dipping into this game like a year or so ago. Uh, apparently, if you jump over the ledge, but not far enough to where Pikachu follows you, and you wait, Pikachu starts to panic. <laughs> <laughs> Which is incredible. <laughs> that makes me so happy as a touch. Whoever thought of that idea? I love it. Alright, it's okay, Pikachu. Pikachu just can't see over jumps. And they have no object permanence. So, to Pikachu, we disappeared. We never existed. We were a dream the whole time. See those ledges along the road? It's a bit scary, but you can jump from them. You can get back to Pallet Town quicker that way. Who dares? Bird or rat? Rat. And much more on Model Rat. Because Pokemon Yellow has a new round of sprite art for all the Pokemon. 
Still not animated. None of the Pokemon are animated in battle, but... Their sprite art is more in line with the way they appear in the anime and the way they would appear pretty much from now on. Random question, can I post links in here? I was going to share a picture of a cat. Uh, you need to get mod permission to post a link. At which point, it will be possible. All right. We don't really need this yet, but I'm curious to see if it looks any different. I can't remember how it looks with Pikachu. Does it just disappear and uh, temporarily go into ball form for healing? Yeah, okay. I do love that he actually does hop up on the counter. It's very cute. <laughs> Pikachu, don't just stand on the counter. Come on, we gotta go. Colors she'll st will still shift pretty dra drastically for Pokemon. That is true. They are working still with a very limited palette of colors here, so... The new pixel art for a lot of the Pokemon will... Still not perfectly reflect the colors of the way these Pokemon are meant to look, but it'll be pretty close. As close as can be achieved on this very, very low-powered handheld. Hello again, rat. Now, I've not yet decided, and we can all kind of, uh, figure that out together. This time I feel like it's not a bad idea to go ahead and get a Pokemon early on, kind of within the first several hours, who can be kind of like our main utility player, who can be taught all of the HMs to get us around for most of the game. I don't know who the best ones for that are. I think Rattata is a good candidate, from what I hear. How's my old Pokemon? Well, it seems to like you a lot. You must be talented as a Pokemon trainer. Don't patronize me. You know the Pikachu doesn't like me yet. You have something for me? Ah, this is the custom Pokeball I ordered. Thanks, Ash. By the way, I must ask you to do something for me. Gramps! Gramps, my Pokemon's grown stronger. Check it out. Ah, oh, Gary, good timing. I needed to ask both of you to do something for me. On the desk, there is my invention, Pokedex. It automatically records data on Pokemon you've seen or caught. It's a high-tech encyclopedia. Ash and Gary, take these with you. To make a complete guide on all the Pokemon in the world. That was my dream. But I'm too old. I can't do it. So I want you two to fulfill my dream for me. Get moving, you two. This is a great undertaking in Pokemon history. All right, Gramps. Leave it all to me. Ash, I hate to say it, but I don't need you. I know. I'll borrow a town map from my sis and tell her not to lend you one. Ha. <laughs> We're good friends. I'm seeing a lot of voting for Rattata in this, uh, <laughs> in this one as the optimal candidate. I noticed in Gen 2 there's only two colors for each Pokemon with the addition of black and white. Whenever the game would have an effect for an attack, it would flash between the colors. Actually, looks really good. I'm excited to see that. Let's go buy some Pokeballs so that we can acquire our utility rat. Did I choose that, or does the Pallet Town just look like that? Oh yeah, no, no, we're to the point where all the colors in the game are as designed. Originally. And it just kind of like pops to new palettes like that every time we enter a new area.
Now where be that shop? Sell me Pokeballs. Many of them. Thank you. Let's go catch some additional friends. And say hi to people. You want to know about the two kinds of Caterpillar Pokemon? More than anything. Caterpie has no poison, but Weedle does. Watch out for its poison sting. Since we're doing a full playthrough this time, I feel like being a little bit more thorough. I want to catch lots of little buddies. I don't know why I'm in here. I don't need it. Seems like they substituted grayscale tones from Pokemon Gray with a color palette they thought would work best. That is what it seems like, right? Because, yeah, this game could run on, on an original Game Boy and just be black and white. But if you play it on a, a Game Boy Color, then this is what you get, which is cool. What am I doing on this side? Need to be in the grass. Come, Pikachu. Let's make you a friend. Perfect. Slightly less grumpy looking bird, but still a little bit grumpy. Also, I don't think we can not obliterate this bird. I don't think we have that power yet. We're probably going to need to catch a rat in order to effectively catch a Pidgey. Here, rat, 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 rat. You are not a rat. You won't do it all. I guess you could just throw the ball. Do you still have like decent odds of catching like a level two or three Pokemon even without weakening them? I never really tried. Let's give it a shot. You're level 5, so you could possibly withstand a hit anyway. If it's a Pidgey, then yes. If smaller than 5, ball. So 5 may be too high, but let's, let's see what happens. Wow, alright! What an agreeable Pidgey. Tiny bird. Very docile. If attacked, it will often kick up sand to protect itself rather than fight back. Welcome to the Team Pidgey. Please get in front and hit the first rat you see, please. If you see a, like, if you see a rat out there, it's weapons free. Fire at will. Rattata and Raticate can't actually learn any HMs yet. Wait, as in, like, in Gen 1? Or... Hey, what do you mean? Oh, so the rat is not going to be perfect for this. That's okay, we got, we got a lot of time until we need to, uh... It's really not until we get to the SSN that we need to be able to teach a move for, like, utility purposes, right? So we got plenty of time to catch some, uh... So there's not really a good one in Gen 1. That's okay, maybe we'll just spread them around like normal. Wait until later Gens to, uh, have a dedicated HM. Throw the ball. Aren't the HM moves pretty good in Gen 1? I think some of them are decent. Will chew on anything with its fangs. If you see one, it is certain that 40 more live in the area. It's very cute Rotata art. Alright, we got our first few friends. And I think that's about all we're going to see in the grass here. It's about time to run to the woods. Surf, Fly, and Strength are pretty decent. The other two are like, eh. Yeah, like, Cut, maybe, even by mid-game, Cut is kind of lacking. And Flash, I don't even know what that does. Maybe just, like, minimizes accuracy or something. 
Not amazing. And this is one of the rare instances where Pikachu can learn Surf. I don't think that's usually true in other gens. And yeah, that is kind of the downside with HMs. You cannot, once you've taught an HM to a Pokemon, you cannot override it with another move. For some reason. Oh, is Surf Pikachu just like a special event Pokemon? Maybe that's what I'm remembering. Pikachu can learn fly in this game too. I guess there is that, in the intro, we saw Pikachu on a surfboard and like floating with balloons. So maybe. <laughs> So, okay, Strength and Surf are definitely good. Strength is an 80 power normal type move. Surf is a 95 power water type move. And that's not bad at all. This one has a Surf Pikachu minigame. Well, we gotta find it. If it exists. For sure. Let's see if there's anything else interesting in this town. Anyone to talk to? Those Pokeballs at your waist. You have Pokemon. It's great that you can carry and use Pokemon anytime, anywhere. I agree. Uh, right. We're not going to go get in a fight yet, but we are going to see if we can catch some new friends. Like you. Without spoiling, there's one new big piece of animation if you want to point it out later. It's kind of hidden behind set events. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I want to make sure my highest priority for these streams is to be sure we get footage of any new or different unique animation, so absolutely yes. Fire! Oh, that makes sense. You can't delete HMs probably so you can't accidentally lock yourself into an area. That makes tons of sense, actually. Yep, that's probably exactly why. Good thought. A mild-mannered Pokemon that does not like to fight. Beware its small horns secrete venom. Well, that's one Nidoran, but I think we could go for two. Will I be playing gold or silver or going straight to crystal? Oh, hey, I'm Enki as well. We're on a roll. Uh, I will be playing... I will be playing probably Gold and Crystal, and I'll have to decide which of them I only play, like, part way. We could play both of them completely, but that just seems... maybe a little more excessive than necessary. We got a main key! Am I speedrunning your childhood? Kind of. An agile Pokemon that lives in trees. It angers easily and will not hesitate to attack anything. So kind of the opposite of the Nidoran we just caught. The back sprites look even weirder with the new front-facing sprites. That's true, the back sprite art didn't get updated, did it? Oh yeah, Mankey is going to be our anti-Brock weapon. Wow. They're just showing us all the new Pokemon that we need. Back to back. What a starter crew we're acquiring. I'm just going to try throwing the ball again. The king is here. <laughs> its large ears are always kept upright. If it senses danger, it will attack with a poisonous sting. Well, we just cleaned out that area of grass pretty quickly. If I'm worried about burning out on a generation, perhaps we could return to third editions at a later point. That's not a terrible idea. We'll have to see how we feel. Because, yeah, just because we're kind of like playing in order here doesn't necessarily mean we need to play all the games that we're going to cover uh, in order. Well, though, although, okay, we might have to be tactical about it. If we do decide to, like, only play one game from each gen in order as we're going through, I do still want to experience kind of like the... Yeah, playing them in order is actually still a good idea, because then we're seeing the animated changes and additions as they happen in order. And there's a nice, like, that makes it a little easier to follow, right? 
It'll be easier for us to notice when something is new or different. And we are going to be little animation detectives about this. <laughs> I didn't play blue long enough to see the legendary gold bat sprite. <laughs> True, but that's not it. That's fortunately, especially in this era where we're just uh, dealing with static sprites in battle, with static art. It's not really animation, it's just new sprite art. So even though it's all new pixel art for all the Pokemon here in yellow, in terms of animation, it may as well not be. It's the same. It's just a different static image. XP share in this generation is one-sixth of the HP each uh, XP each Pokemon gets. You do not get bonus XP like in Gen 6. That's a shame. Still, better than nothing. So what's our... I assume our lineup is pretty full. Yeah, okay, L lineup is now full. Full crew. And I think we can already kind of predict what our... What at least a big chunk of our final lineup is going to be. Our, our, our six by endgame. Pikachu and the three starters seems like absolutely definite. I'm playing Ash far too competently, not lore accurate. <laughs> uh, so, we, like, Pikachu and the starters. I feel like emulating Ash is not actually not a terrible idea in terms of, like, choosing our crew. So, like, who are the other, like, early Gen 1 original anime? Who are, the ma who are like, Ash's favorite buddies? Butterfree is, like, definitely one, right? Butterfree is one, so that's... Five, so we need one. Pidgeotto is right. That's one of the other ones. So we could, we could just copy Ash. Snorlax and Primeape later. Okay, okay. Wow, we've already got three of our crew. It's one of our mains in that case. A Lapras later as well. That's right. That's right. Okay. If we're copying Ash, that also means getting rid of Butterfree. <laughs> Fair point. Well, we can... Butterfree can help carry us early on, and then as soon as we get a different replacement, we'll swap Butterfree out. Is it possible for you to trade anything for your blue playthrough? I don't think so. And I don't think I would. I think we'll we'll, we'll stick to just whatever we can catch in any, any one of these. As many Tauros as possible. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, right now, then, we will be prioritizing Pikachu, Pidgey... Mankey especially, because Mankey's going to be very helpful uh, against Brock. Yeah, maybe we better go ahead and put Mankey up front. And go ahead and do a save. Anyone else interesting in this town? Didn't really talk to either of you. This shop sells a lot of paralyzed heals. The shop finally has some potions in stock. I should probably get some stuff before going into the woods. Like, uh... Eh. Probably fine with just one potion to start. Antidotes, though, we will want a few of for our sanity. Don't feel like we need either of these so much right now. I'm noticing an interesting little graphics effect that happens when we switch over to shop. Oh, okay, it's just the uh, it's the sprites for the characters disappearing before the stuff comes up on screen. I was wondering, is, like, is that, like, is the emulator freaking out a little bit? I think that's, no, that, that makes sense for how the game would actually function. Who lives here? Phew, I'm trying to memorize all my notes. Sis says Pokemon will become tame if you treat them nicely. What do you think, Pikachu? Okay, be sure to read the blackboard carefully. The blackboard describes Pokemon status changes during battles. I'm good. 
I remember. Read the notes on the desk. Looked at the notebook. First page. Pokeballs are used to catch Pokemon. Up to six Pokemon can be carried. People who raise and make Pokemon fight are called Pokemon trainers. Turn the page? Yes. Second page. A healthy Pokemon may be hard to catch, so weaken it first. Poison, burns, and other damage are effective. Turn the page? Yes. Third page. Pokemon trainers seek others to engage in Pokemon fights. Battles are constantly fought at Pokemon gyms. Turn the page? Yes. Sorry, I'm copying off your notes here. Fourth page. The goal for Pokemon trainers is to beat the top eight Pokemon gym leaders. Do so to earn the right to face the Elite Four of Pokemon League. Goodness, this is full of good information. More good information than most other resources in this game. <laughs> Don't look at my notes. Well, they're very helpful notes. I don't regret doing so. I'm guessing we can't get through here yet. My daddy loves Pokemon, too. It's not super often you actually see... Like, they, they do have Pokemon out in the world, even this early on. But only some of them actually, like, move around like this. It's kind of nice. Coming up with nicknames is fun, but hard. Simple names are the easiest to remember. A town map. Spiro named Spiri. <laughs> Do you have to write that down on the wall to remember? When I go shop in Pewter City, I have to take the winding trail in Viridian Forest. Ah, I've had my coffee now and I feel great. Sure, you can go through. I'm sorry I was so rude to you. I didn't talk to you before. I see you're using a Pokedex. I'll show you how to catch Pokemon as my apology. Wild Rattata appeared. Yeah, thank you, yes. No, another old man has already shown me this process. He was better at it. That didn't work. I must be losing my touch. I've run out of Pokeballs, too. I have to get some at Pokemon Mart. Anyway, bye. Viridian City Pokemon Gym. This Pokemon Gym's always closed. I wonder who the leader is. That'll be a mystery for another day. Now, onward to Route 2. Which I don't think has anything new and exciting that I recall in the grass on the way. We've already got our Nidorans and the Mankey with some very wild back sprite art. Maybe better to... Well, who knows? Maybe Mankey can pull this off. Get him, Mankey! I, too, believe in the tiny weird monkey. Hey, thanks for the 16 months, Dan. Hope you're doing good. Hey, thank you for the 18 months, Shingraph. I almost missed you. Glad you have caught us live. Welcome. You can do it, Mankey. Believe. How are things? Pretty good. Feels good to be playing Pokemon in color. <laughs> and with a tiny disapproving Pikachu following me all the while. Ah. Our theme music.
Ah, I thought we might be able to pull it off. Well, Mankey set things up on the tee for... Hmm. We're kind of prioritizing Mankey, Pikachu, and... I guess Pidgey. Nidoran's also great, but I think we're going to be swapping, like, we're not ultimately going to have a ton of room for them. Dust. You're down. Okay. Dan, odd request. I'm teaching my child that you're alive, and therefore I can't pause, as compared to our normal Dan time on YouTube. Can you say hi to Toby? Hello, Toby. Welcome to the live stream. It's a little different from YouTube videos. YouTube videos, usually, I record well in advance, and then y'all can watch those anytime you like. But with live streaming, it's actually live. It's just me here. Hello. I can read what y'all are saying over there. So everyone has to, like, behave themselves. I mean, they don't have to, but they should. <laughs> are you going to Viridian Forest? Be careful, it's a natural maze. You have to roam far to get new, po new kinds of Pokemon. Look for other types outside of Viridian Forest. Thanks for the 18 months, Ice0001. I came here with some friends. They're out for Pokemon fights. Come along, Pikachu. Let's catch something new. I guess we should actually probably take our Mankey into the vet, huh? Ah! Hello, new friend. Pikachu, you're not going to make this one faint, right? You know, just to play it safe. I should go buy more Pokeballs, too. Ah. Oh. One more. Stubborn. Some fight in this one. Well, maybe it won't faint. Okay, I think we got this thing now. You will be coming with me. Really? Wow. Yeah, that's the one that got away for sure. They earned it. It's all right. We'll come back more equipped. The problem was Mankey was fainting. Otherwise, we'd have caught that. Hey, thanks for the 15 months, Quasimodo. And thank you for subscribing. Easily readable name. <laughs> Does what it says on the tin, and I appreciate it as one who says names wrong all the time. She insisted I subscribe to you, but I was already level one sub, so I had to do something. <laughs> well, thank you very much. This time we'll go armed with way more Pokeballs. Specifically, four more. Or three. Gotta head to bed, Font of Wisdom. It's totally okay. The VOD will be up in a day or two, and we will be streaming a lot more of this on uh, Thursday. I'll be starting a good bit earlier. It'll be a day full of Pokemon Yellow. We will go far. I need more Pokeballs, but for that, I need to steal more Forest Children's lunch money. Not even really steal. Legitimately earn. Hmm. 
Now, Mankey, I believe that you can beat this rat. Or at least... You know what, Pikachu, you fight the rat. I haven't got all day. Mankey, you will get the experience. What a cute Rattata sprite. Much less shouty. Extremely cute. Now. I ran out of Pokeballs to catch Pokemon with. You should carry extras. Boy. Would that I'd run into you in the woods sooner. Hey! You have Pokemon! Come on! Let's battle them! He's got a bug! All right. Pikachu, get it. Zap the bug. Did the music go extra buzzy there, or is it just you? Well, they did mix in that extremely bit-crushed Pikachu voice in there, so... That might have impacted the sound a bit. I wonder, Pidgey, can you defeat... This Caterpie, it is higher level than you. But then you are also higher up the food chain. I think the biggest challenge with the third versions is that the visual set pieces for the box art legendaries are pretty far in. I don't know for sure what that means. I may need further explanation. While bombarding this caterpillar with wind. I knew you had it in you, Pidgey. I guess for encountering the legendaries, you have to get through most of the game to do so. That is true. And it does make sense. So with some of these playthroughs, we will not be encountering legendaries for not going... by not going far enough. But... We'll do so at least once. Each gen. That is for sure. All right, Mankey, this fight you can most definitely win eventually. It might just take a little while. Unless you keep critical hitting like this. Oh, I see. So, like, you were saying, like, when you get to whatever the big cool legendary on the box is, it usually has a, this is like a climactic plot beat later in the game, and it's usually a higher spectacle moment with some unique assets and animations, and then the third version of the game for that generation can have changes to that sequence. That makes sense. Okay. Fortunately, at least the third version of the game aspect, that stops relatively early on. Is Emerald the last one like that? Platinum's the last one like that. Because, like, 
Black 2 and White 2 are sequels, effectively. Platinum has a ton of different stuff. So yeah, that one with Platinum and, like, Diamond and Pearl, we'll, we'll just play all the way through those. Which I'm more on board with doing, because I also have not played any of those before. And fortunately, after that point, we won't have, like, any of that weird duplicate playing the same game back-to-back -back issue. Like, maybe we'll be playing remakes of some of those games, like, I'm sure we'll get to... Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, whatever, stuff like that. Fire Red, Leaf Green. We'll play those, but those are kind of a new experience. Hey, thanks for the 18 months of Albatross. And do I have a favorite Pokemon? Not yet, but I would like to, by the end of this long journey, I really should, I think. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are the only ones after that that kind of get to that territory further down the line. That makes sense. And may like, maybe we'll play through all of those completely, maybe not. We'll, we'll see how different they feel. And even though I am trying to be pretty thorough, especially this early on when there's so little animation to be seeing and judging and factoring in, by the time we're that far in, like, we don't have to have gotten footage of every single animation in the game. That's not at all necessary. By that point, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds thousands of animations in every one of those games. You just need enough animations to convey, like, the breadth of the categories and to get a better, an understanding of the animate all of the animation systems. You don't have to see every single use case of every single thing. But if there is a, a very unique use case, you do want footage of that. Fair warning about Diamond and Pearl. They play especially slow, especially when contrast with how fast uh, Ruby, Saf, uh, RSE, and R... Fire Red, Leaf Green, and Ruby Saffron. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I get you. Uh, with how those. Platinum Speed Sinnoh up, but it's still slower than the GBA game. That's okay. We'll, like, if they take a while, they take a while. From the sound of things, it's also, like, a really choice generation of Pokemon games anyway. I feel like we'll have a good time. Get that experience, Mankey. Become strong. Learn a fighting move. And that is true. Whoa, it's Joan. We are also getting very ahead of ourselves. <laughs> we are just getting started with the first game of Gen 1 that we're actually going to play all the way through, after which we have quite a few more games before we are contending with how we're going to handle diamond and or platinum. We'll get there. Hey, Restronomer, thanks for the 18 months. I almost missed that. My bad. Need to put my headphones back in so I hear those uh, sounds when they pop up. There is a lot to be excited about. I agree. There's a lot of Pokemon to experience and I'm excited to finally get more acquainted with <laughs> what for so many of you are nostalgic memories. You assume we're not going to look at uh, like Stadium and Coliseum. We are going to look at them. We're not going to play them all the way through, but we will be also dipping into all of the spinoffs as they come up, probably for like one stream each, generally. Because while the footage of those is not as essential uh, for my purposes. It is useful for having the context of what other like ways that these same Pokemon might be getting animated in game, in other games, on other systems, different hardware, that sort of thing. So yeah, Pokemon Snap as well, for sure. We'll do an episode of that. Or an episode. A stream of that. That's gonna be my equivalent of like Dan occasionally calling y'all chat in our co-op Let's Play playthroughs. I'll be... I'll be saying stuff like comments and episodes all the time. 
from habit. And yes, we will dip into Mystery Dungeon games. Absolutely. And the Ranger games. And other random stuff like Pokken. What is chat but a real-time comment section? Basically, yes. Hey, you Pikachu! Maybe. I need to actually look into that one. Some of y'all brought that up last time, and I'd not considered it. It sounds... We might dip into it just enough, but it, I, it sounds like it is so limited on the animation side of things as to be nearly irrelevant. Kind of same with pinball, but we'll see. We'll see. I won't completely rule it out. Trainer tips. Contact Professor Oak via PC to get your Pokedex evaluated. Right, the very weird sign that Oak himself definitely placed here. Because literally no one else but Gary, I guess, would know that, and there's no way Gary is placing a sign to help other people. Impossible. We still need a bug. And I think this bug is the one. Really? A lot of stubborn bugs in these woods. There we go. Powerful bugs in these woods. If you touch the feeler on top of its head, it will release a horrible stink to protect itself. Welcome to the team, Caterpie. You're gonna be on this crew for a while. I feel like we should actually get you in the lineup. Well, here, let's... Eh, I only have, like, one more Pokeball left, don't I? Maybe two. Two, okay. Let's go a little further to also get into a trainer battle or two more so we can afford more Pokeballs. You. I'm gonna be the best. You just can't beat me. I feel like spin-off games could be their own set of streams after the mainline ones, just because there's so many. But I do love them so much. I feel like... Since the... If they were gonna be multiple streams, if I was actually gonna, like, finish them, then, yeah, I, I think I would... would take that approach. In this case, since I, uh... Don't expect to play them all the way through, since it'll just be kind of dipping in a toe. I'm fine giving him one stream along the way. Also gives us a little variety, right? A little variety while also still being Pokemon. <laughs> Hit the bug with wind. We really, yeah, speed running the Pokemon timeline is a very good way of saying, like, of <laughs> describing what we're doing here. In a way that does still involve beating many of them and likely taking months and eh, years, probably, to actually achieve. It'll still be speed running the experience of playing the Pokemon games as they came out way faster than everyone else who actually played them when they came out did it. What about Pokemon fan game spinoffs? Uh, no, not fan games. Fan games will not be included. This, that, that's, uh, outside the scope. It's like it's outside the relevance of any animation video I would want to make. Unless I'm making a, ga a video specifically about a fan game, and it's hard thinking of a circumstance in which I would be. Not impossible, but... Do we have a last time on Dan Ball Z for this series? What are we up to right now? <laughs> uh, for those just joining, we are in Pokemon Yellow and we've just begun about an hour or so ago. We're back in... 
Well, starting from the beginning, and we're into Viridian Forest now. Training up our little crew. Catching some forest friends. Slowly training up our Mankey so that they can learn a fighting move. And get us through the Pewter City Gym. Forest children, I'm gonna need way more money than this to afford more Pokeballs to catch all these strong bugs. Everyone get ready for Mount Moon Part 2. Oh no, you're right. Zubats for miles. That'll at least be a great opportunity to make sure that Pikachu is ready for Cerulean, though. Last time we beat the Grass Gym in Pokemon Blue and decided that was enough for Pokemon Blue? Yeah, oh yeah, if we were talking about last stream, then yes, we got through- we got our fourth badge, and that was, uh, enough for me to be content with the amount of footage I have from Blue. For the time being. What else could we run into in Viridian? There's Caterpies, there's Metapods. Rare Pik- I think there's other Pikachus you can catch, but they're... low chance. Apparently you can catch Pidgeotto's because of the anime, which is cute. Oh, there's no Pikachu this time around? That seems reasonable. It's not like we need another. Hello, bird. The only Pikachu that exists in yellow is the one you start the game with. Oh, I didn't know that. That does also make sense. Pikachu is made is, like, elevated to a very special place in yellow, specifically. Makes sense to make them be more one-of-a-kind. Unless you trade for one. Gotcha, gotcha. That exception makes sense as well. I feel like the stream border should be slightly animated. I think I found a project for the evening. Hey, by all means. I could see an animated, like, adding some sort of animation to the border, like something light scrolling or, or something could be kind of fun. We're definitely going to be doing a good bit more grinding in this forest this time around. To level up this Mankey, and maybe also to get Pikachu and uh, Pidgey, and Caterpie for that matter. Kind of up to a satisfactory level. Strong bug. Oh, that's right, the Pikachu in this one. Goodness, very strong bug. The Pikachu in, uh... Eh... Sure. The Pikachu in, uh... Yellow cannot evolve. Like the Pikachu in the anime. Well, the one in the anime can evolve, but doesn't want to. And this one also rejects evolving. Just like Ash will eternally be 11. <laughs> yeah. They are similar in that way, aren't they? 
How's that Caterpie faster than my Pikachu? I guess it's level 10. But then, it's fainted and I'm not, so... Thinks it's so smart. Not a good noise. I would spend a turn using a potion if it wouldn't considerably delay our eradication of this metapod. Potion after. Level 9, Mankey, you're getting there. Low kick! Okay, is that... that's fighting, yeah? Hang on. I don't know if I can actually get details on low kick in there. Okay, hang on, I'll... This is what Google is for. Low kick. Gen 1. Pokemon. It is a damage-dealing fighting move. All right. Power of 50, accuracy of 90%, has a 30% chance to cause the target to flinch. Nice. Beautiful. The best fighting move in Gen 1, arguably. It, wow. Is, is it because of that unique effect where not only does it do the flinch thing, but it hurts bigger Pokemon more? If you want to avoid battles, stay away from grassy areas. Have you noticed the bushes on the roadside? They can be cut down by a special Pokemon move. Many Pokemon live only in forests and caves. You need to look everywhere to get different kinds. The weight-based damage for low kick was introduced in later gens. Gotcha. In Gen 1, it's just 50 power. But doesn't have the recoil of stuff like submission. I see. And yeah, that makes sense that they wouldn't be factoring in stuff like weight this early on. There aren't many serious Pokemon trainers here. They're all, like, bug catchers, but Pewter Jim's Brock is totally into it. Pulpapedia does have so much detail. That's kind of the lovely thing about it, right? Like, we talked earlier, like, in a previous stream about how part of what makes Pokemon so great is that it is... Its surface level is so simple if that's all you want it to be, but if you want it to be more... Like, if you want more depth, it's under there. Just under the surface, you need only look. And Bulbapedia shows you the full span of depth. <laughs> All at once. For every single Pokemon. It's kind of beautiful. Just in case any of you needed a little quick nap. <laughs> Talk to Pikachu next. Oh, that's a good idea. When Jigglypuff sings, Pokemon get drowsy. Me too, Snore. That's true, Pikachu. You're not really following me right now, are you? <laughs> it's so cute. Wake up, buddy. <laughs> Twiddle, hello! <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Good to see you. We're making our Pikachu fall asleep. Pikachu. So darn cute. Especially for a little touch this early on. Wow. What happens if you leave? Guess we gotta find out. What? Team Rocket's at Mount Moon? Huh? I'm on the phone. <laughs> Scram. <laughs> That's really funny. That's really funny. <laughs> Old RPG dialogue. I like it. He 
if you leave while Pikachu's asleep, he just follows you out. I kind of figured, yeah, like, I'll stay put, but if I just keep going, Pikachu will be with us. Yeah. Still funny that you can actually walk away with them just sort of staying there. How you doing lately, Pikachu? Still very nonplussed. It's okay. We've only known each other an hour and a half. Notice! Thieves have been stealing Pokemon fossils at Mount Moon. Please call Pewter Police with any info. Did you check out the museum? Not yet. Really? You absolutely have to go. Oh. I love this theme in Pokemon games. <laughs> and that was it. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> it's like one of my favorite little recurring themes. It is so peppy and happy. It's right here. You have to pay to get in, but it's worth it. See you around. In a little bit. The museum, perhaps, will be our reward after we have gotten all grinded up. And gotten our first badge. We're making so little money right now. I guess I don't have anything else I need to catch in the woods, so we don't need to buy more Pokeballs at this exact moment. We just need to go back to the woods and grind some more. There's nothing new to fight in this grass, I don't think, right? Seems like a rat to me. Speaking of, Dan, I found a video that showcases every one of Pikachu's overworld animations and the mechanics behind them, how they trigger. Uh, you want the link? Actually, yeah, that'd be very helpful. Uh, you can send it either in chat or if you've got another means, like if you're a, a patron, you can send it to me via, like, Patreon messaging or the Discord or whatever else. Here's also fine. <laughs> Wherever is most convenient for you. And, uh, let's see. Let me get one moment. I'll get permits for you going. I'm just slow. <laughs> I think that should do it. That might not have done it. I might have needed to be like slash permit. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. That's okay. That's what I did wrong there. Thank you, Yen. I got the uh, syntax incorrect. <laughs> Real Twitch noob YouTuber moment. <laughs> thank you, Yen, and thank you for the link, Yzandai. Very much. I will set that aside for later. That'll be good to make sure that I don't miss anything too super uh, useful to make sure we get all the footage we need. All right, who? I feel like Mankey at level 10 with low kick is going to have zero problem in that gym. Mount Moon will be all it takes to get Pikachu however high level we need to uh, be ready for Cerulean. Let's get Cat Caterpie needs to be in here. We need to start working on Caterpie too. Especially because Caterpie gets confused at, like, level 10 instantly as soon as they become Butterfree in this one. Which, Confuse and Psychic moves in general are still as bonkers OP as ever. In this, just like in, uh, Pokemon Blue. Alright. Nidorons. You get stored. Rattata as well. I don't think we're going to be using Rattata. Yeah, Butterfree I, is very good in yellow. Going to be leaning on them a lot in the first half of the game, I think. You know, let's go ahead and put both Nidorons away. I would... 
I would normally, if we were in like in regular blue and I'd caught a male Nidoran, I would be, they might be in my main lineup for most of the game, because, uh, Nidoking is real dang good. But, uh, given we're going to have a Pikachu and a Charmander, Squirtle, Bul Bulbasaur, Butterfree, <laughs> given we're going to have all of those heavy hitters early on, I feel like there's not going to be much room here. Make sure everyone's topped off. Nato King is used in speed runs, if you remember right. I assume they must do some RNG manipulation to catch the Nato King as well, right? Like, Pokemon speedrunning is just so much about RNG manipulation. It's fascinating watching a Pokemon speedrun. <laughs> Some speedrun categories, they use a glitch to get one around about Viridian Forest. Oh, cool. Yeah, Pokemon runs at GDQ are always uh, a fascinating watch. Hello, strong bug. Get pummeled. Gen 1 Pokemon is wonderfully breakable. Less Gen 2 to a lesser extent. And that, that is what I've... From what little I've heard, yeah, Gen 2 is much more solidly built. In no small part, thanks to the, uh, to Iwata's programming contributions, yeah? Or was that mainly to do with, like, how much Iwata managed to condense Pokemon, like, Gen 2 to the point that they could actually include Kanto in there? I guess I don't know specifically what Iwata, uh, did. Only that Iwata contributed a lot to <laughs> what that Gen was able to do. Pikachu, stop missing the bird. I don't care how much sand is in your eyes. Come on. <laughs> Pidgey looks like you just said something really odd. <laughs> it is kind of like a perplexed look. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Okay, so someone's providing answers here. Uh, if I recall, what happened is they were having trouble fitting Johto into the cartridge, and Iwata solved the compression problem so well, they were actually able to include a scaled-down Kanto as a post-game area. Right, that that sounds like what I remember hearing. Which is really cool. Solve the compression thing. Okay. Neat. Grow strong, Mankey. Gonna be grinding out here for a little bit. Settle in. I enjoyed very much playing Pokemon Sword on the channel, and we're, we'll definitely do mainline Pokemon games on Playframe as YouTube playthroughs in the future again. Probably with, like, newer releases and stuff. Uh, this is kind of like the benefit, it feels like, though, of playing especially old Pokemon games on Twitch, because there are lots of times you do just need to grind for a while. And just being able to hang out and chat is way more fun than just sitting quietly in a room grinding, knowing you're going to be cutting 90% of the footage you're recording. <laughs> With no one but yourself to keep you company. This is more fun. 
And with new Pokemon, you don't really have to, like, grind nearly so much. And what grinding you do, you can do is a little more varied and efficient and <laughs> less repetitive, let's say. level 10 yet? No. Working on it. Are you telling me, Carrie? does just come in and play the chicken noise, and you blink, and then you're done grinding. <laughs> that she doesn't do that? I wish sometimes. <laughs> I'm glad we have that option, though, for keeping the pace of Let's Plays going. How much of Final Fantasy VII did you plan to do for the story, and how much did you end up doing because you have to get Knights of the Round? Um, I have bad news if you're expecting to see Knights of the Round in that playthrough. <laughs> I am not... Young me put in the time to do the chocobo breeding, raising nonsense. Adult me has better things to do. I didn't try doing the RNG thing. Yeah, no, I, I considered it, but then I just sort of realized as I was getting to the end that, like, I, it, I don't... <laughs> I don't need it that bad. Even just putting in the 45 minutes to try, it just sort of feels like, eh. <laughs> I've seen it. It's just a very long summon animation. And I don't, I don't need a very long summon animation to do absurd damage. Have you seen Tifa? I feel like I can do more damage with Tifa in a minute and a half than Knights of the Round has a chance of doing. <laughs> just leave, just lock Tifa in a room with that enemy for a minute and a half, and you won't know the difference. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually going to have to cut in footage of, you know, uh, you know, one-winged angel Sephiroth final boss, like, his sort of, like, ultra move that's really over the top and bonkers and basically like a summon animation of its own? I'm gonna have to cut footage in from having recorded that previously, because Tifa didn't give him a chance. <laughs> And I didn't even grind that much. She wasn't even that overpowered. She's level like 60 something. Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, but consider double summon Knights of the Round with Mimic and the other on the other two party members. Like it, I suppose sure if you want to if you want to buy yourself time for a bathroom break and making tea and maybe also a sandwich before the game is ready to let you do an input again. <laughs> I wonder what the overlap on the Venn diagram is between Final Fantasy <clears throat> Final Fantasy fans who got themselves all set up to be able to do Knights of the Round multiple times with the mimic stuff <laughs> versus Final Fantasy fans who were cranky about Final Fantasy 12 and accused it of playing itself. <laughs> the pictures are the same. My favorite thing about the Knights of the Round Final Fantasy, or my favorite Knights of the Round Final Fantasy VII fact, is that in H.C. Bailey's Let's Play, he found out the summon animation is about the same length as the Camelot song from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. That's a fun discovery to have. <laughs> I did not know that, but that's very amusing. 
Am I grinding here because the bugs are easier? The grass patch between the forest and pewter should have slightly higher level Pokemon. That's a good point, you know? Good thinking. And I don't even need to have Mankey up front right now. Level 10 Mankey is enough. Also more variety and less chance to get poisoned. Very good point. All right, Mankey, you're, you're good. No more being up front. Let's start working on Pikachu can get work later. Caterpie, you need to be priority right now. We need a butterfly. Pidgey. Assist, please. Also, for anyone paying attention, play the Unicorn Overlord demo. Oh, there's a demo! Exciting. I, I'm looking forward to... I, I'm always looking forward to whatever Vanillaware does. If for no other reason than, like, nobody else makes games that look like theirs. Or that have a similar vibe, really. Really glad Vanillaware is still around. Like, the stuff they make is often niche enough that I could easily see them have having, like, had trouble staying, like, uh... Like, uh, keeping the lights on, but... I'm glad they've managed it. Caterpie, this rash, uh, this rat is kind of rashing you. Let's pull in your bird friend. Just came back in from watching the Knights of the Round It summon animation. I see now. <laughs> it's definitely, Knights of the Round is definitely something that one should experience, even if just in video form just to see the fun absurdity. And it is a very empowering thing to drop on an enemy if you've put in the work and felt like doing all the chocobo breeding and everything else. Hey, Will and friends, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Hope you're having a lovely evening or whatever time it is for you. Hello, I'm Dan. Most of you, I'm guessing, are probably familiar with me already. <laughs> But if you're not, I'm an animator who makes videos about gaming. You guys probably all know me, don't you? <laughs> Will, how's it going? What were you all playing? Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood. Oh yeah, that one looks neat. How was it? I remember seeing trailers for that one, and I didn't dive in because it, like, didn't have the, uh, it didn't look like it had animation that was going to need to be featuring in that, uh, 2023 game animation video, and I was pretty focused <laughs> when digging through new releases at that point. Astounding, but it hit like a brick. Ooh. Like, a big emotional, uh, experience. Top tier, but we haven't gotten to the weight of it yet, but we did make our own tarot cards. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited to hear how that turns out. Uh, how, how your experience of that one goes. Because it looks neat. <laughs> Thank you for the 18 months, Shutaro. <laughs> Dan Floyd? I see. <laughs> you goofs. A very emotional game, though. Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood. Yeah, 
Okay, I hope it turns turns out being great. Oh. Gwenny has awoken from her nap and is now just sort of heading toward the door like, I, I'm, let me out, I'm done here. <laughs> she was napping behind me. Now, she's done with this. Hold on. Okay. Your cats have the zoomies? Gwenny's a little old for zoomies. Has been for a good while. She mostly just does the naps, the eating food, and the snuggling. Which is, honestly, a pretty nice combo of things for a cat to do. I, I don't... I have never encountered a cat who is as good at snuggling as Gwenny is. She is, like for one, she is incredibly friendly and loves people. She was like bottle fed as a kitten, so she she behaves more like a dog, really, than a cat. She like is all. She's very social, and she is also just very snuggly. She is like a stuffed animal to hug. And she loves it. Very good cat. Oh, thank you for the 18 months, Kikazi. I almost didn't see that. Is she a vocal cat? Not. She's increasingly gotten, in like the last few weeks, she's gotten a lot more vocal. <laughs> she's not really learned how to meow loudly but she does I she does meow for a, when she wants something way more now <laughs> so she kind of makes up for volume with quantity best she can Your cat never learned how to stop yelling. She kind of quacks like a duck. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we've had definitely all manner of, like, even just with the three cats Carrie and I have, like, had thus far, Kaylee, Prinny, and Gwynny, like, we've had a pretty wide range of, wow, good bird hit there, a pretty wide range of, like, meow qualities that they've had over the course of their lives and uh, different meow volumes, meow habits. Hey, Thunder Wave, nice. Like, Prinny didn't really figure out how to meow for a lot of years. Like, she would kind of, like, open her mouth to make meow sounds, but wouldn't really... There'd be no noise. It was very cute. Kaylee figured out volume pretty early on, though. And eventually kind of... Especially the older she got, kind of honed it for attention grabbing into sort of that sort of smoker's meow, that sort of eh, sort of thing. <laughs> On a random tangent, did Leica aged in blood come across your feed for animation? I did look into it for animation and uh, decided it like, wasn't not to include it in the video, but I, that's still on my list to like try playing sometime because it does look like a, like a fun, really interesting game experience. Looks like it could be quite fun to play. Uh, uh, Pidgey, I guess. Hey, thanks for the three months. Legend of Moriad. Dan, I only know the Dermon that gave out cookies last year. I still have them. They're a bit stale. <laughs> Hey, you enjoy them on your own time. That's fine. Whenever you get around to them. Of 
Grow strong, Caterpie. Ideally strong enough to actually be able to fight a lot of these more easily on your own. I might actually dip back into the woods for that. Even if we're running into, like, the occasional Metapod or whatever. That'll be something where... The Caterpie's getting all of the experience for the fight. Perfect. Speak of the non-attacking devil. Though I guess it might still be a slower experience gain rate, given how long the fight has to be. Eh, yeah, probably. Did anything else interesting get announced in the uh, Pokemon Presents today? Other than the new Legends title? Which, that's pretty good exciting news on its own. I think I had predicted last stream that it was going to be like a, a remake of Gen 5. And I expect that that is coming probably in the next year or two. But I, did, I remember seeing somebody, some folks in chat, guessing a new Legends game. And they called it. All right, so a mobile TCG game. Hey, that's... That, seems, that could be good. Give me a Legends game with some real polish. Yeah, I am hoping that they're able to give it a little bit more of a polish treatment. There's never guarantees with these things, but... Especially if... Like... I don't remember, actually. Does, does anyone remember, like... Was Legends developed by the same... Core Game Freak team? Or was it, like, a different team within Game Freak? Or is it a, just a different studio, kind of, like, co-developing along with Game Freak uh, in general? I can't remember. So I would have assumed that the development for Legends Arceus or Arceus or whatever would be overlapping quite a bit with the development of Scarlet and Violet. In order to be having those in development in parallel, they'd have to be somewhat separate teams, at least within... within Game Freak. It was in-house, I'm pretty sure. That's why, uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl was out of house, because the 4 gen remakes became their own separate th That makes sense, yeah, yeah, like... Yeah, especially if they're doing both Legends and Gen 9 in-house at the same time, they would not have bandwidth to do the Gen 4 remakes also on top of that. Because they're not a giant development studio. Like, they're pretty big at this point. They're actually very big at this point, but they're not... They're not, like, rock star big. <laughs> How's the Pokemon Adventures? Pretty good. A little grindy right now, because our caterpillar is becoming swole. Although I guess it's not vital that Caterpie become Butterfree before we go and fight, uh, before we go and fight Brock. Might save us a little time, though. Let's, here, let's get Caterpie at least up to level 7, become Metapod. We can go and fight, uh, Brock, and then as we're heading through Mount Moon and stuff like that, we can slowly be getting that Metapod up to level 10. And then as soon as they hit level 10, they'll have confusion and it'll be a little silly. From Caterpie to Soup to Butterfree. Yep, the, 
The butterfly life cycle. The whole thing about cocoons is the kind of like real life nature thing that if that didn't exist and someone made it up for like a fantasy novel type thing, it would seem too far-fetched. It would seem... It seems absurd. Bug, go into cocoon. Become goo. Become butterfly. It... It's bonkers. What a weird trait, like, what a weird thing to evolve to do. <laughs> Whoa! Centiper and friends, hello! Goodness! Hi! <laughs> hello! Oh, and also thank you for the 18 months, Blind Play. Pokemon Yellow version today, it's true. But yeah, hello, welcome everyone! Hi, I'm Dan. I'm an, like a professional game animator, and I make videos about game animation on a YouTube channel called New Frame Plus, if you've not seen me before. Uh, hello! Welcome! Well, what were y'all doing earlier before you came here? <laughs> yeah, thanks for the gifts up there, Yen. Much appreciated. We're playing Pokemon Yellow right now, because I need footage of a lot of Pokemon games, so we're we're playing all of them in order. <laughs> it's it's going to take a while. It's going to be a big endeavor. We're You're catching us pretty early on here. I'm getting educated in Pokemon history, which I know way too little about, frankly. So what I'm saying is if you love Pokemon, then great, welcome. Settle in for the long haul. And if you don't like Pokemon, sorry. <laughs> You were doing a VR game. You've actually watched all the VODs on Red and Blue. Oh, that's nice. I'm flattered. <laughs> How was the VR game? Ooh. Caterpie Evolve. Become Goo. Tech issues, sadly. Ah, oh, sorry to hear it. Well, I hope you're able to get those resolved. Few things frustrate me as immediately as a technical problem. My patience for technology not working as intended is zero. <laughs> I used to think that Metapods were OP because of the anime. <laughs> Somewhat misleading, isn't it? We should explore this town a little bit more before we go and hopefully win the gym. Same tech issues are the one thing that really, yeah, grinds my gears. But no, I love your channel. I hope Pokemon goes well. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the raid. <laughs> I do hope those tech issues get sorted out pretty quickly with minimal frustration. It's the most any of us can ever hope. <laughs> okay, I am real quick. I have to run to the washroom real fast. And then we are going to go explore a little bit more in this town and get our first gym badge, I think. So here you all sit tight and look at the pretty BRB screen that Lil made for us. And I will be right back in a moment.
I am back. I return. Haven't listened to this Ben Briggs track in years. It's been a while for me, too. Is this the one from the Missing No album from OC Remix? Maybe. Let me check. Yes, I think. No, this one's from the Eevee EP. Which is a good album name. <laughs> Ben Briggs is great. But okay, switching back over. There we are. In retrospect, I love me some Ben Briggs, but that's some pretty upbeat music for that laid back BRB screen. Maybe next time we'll switch it to something a little bit more lo fi. <laughs> but that's all for later. For now, we have a town to explore a little further, and a badge to earn, and a hydrate reminder to take advantage of. Thank you, Sammy. Good advice. Okay. Let's poke around this town some more. Pokemon become easier to catch when they are hurt or asleep. Like most of us, I guess. But it's not a sure thing. Pokemon learn new techniques as they grow. But some moves must be taught by the trainer. Hello. Psst. Do you know what I'm doing? No. I'm spraying Repel to keep Pokemon out of my garden. Okay, why are we whispering? Is this a secret? I'm going to go. Yeah, good point. The Pikachu got in. I don't know if the Repel worked. Nidoran, sit! Bow, bow. Sir, I regret to inform you, your Nidoran's a dog. Our Pokemon's an outsider, so it's hard to handle. An outsider's a Pokemon that you got in a trade. It grows fast, but it may ignore an unskilled trainer in battle. If only we had some badges. I like the in-universe assertion that Pokemon when traded may not necessarily obey orders right away from a new trainer, but they will respect rank. <laughs> if they see that you have several badges for your good Poke Trainer work, they'll be like, alright, well, I guess I have no choice. <laughs> Can't argue with that. It's rumored that Clefairies came from the moon. They appeared after Moonstone fell on Mount Moon. Cool. All right. Gym time. We are to be champs in the making. 
Do you have to show each Pokemon your badges every time you get one so they fall in line? <laughs> Establish that rank early. All right, Mankey. Let's win some early fights and get you an extra level or so. Hiya! I can tell you how what it takes to become a Pokemon champ. I'm no trainer, but I can tell you how to win. Let me take you to the top! All right, let's get happening. It'll be tough for your Pikachu at this gym. Electric attacks are harmless to Brock's ground-type Pokemon. It's a good tip. It's fine, though. I have a monkey. Stop right there, kid. You're still light years from facing Brock. Look at that perfectly adequate Diglett. Kick! Boy, that is strong. That is a strong move. Good work, Mikey. Let's see how this sh Sand Shrew, like, compares to... Still very good and way more on model. Honestly, slightly less cute than the, uh, want than the sprite in blue and red. That's a pretty hard one to compete with. Definitely more on model, though. Sturdier, too. Then the Diglett. Good work, Mankey. Dang, light years isn't time. It measures distance. Uh, you know, Brock, maybe we better uh, actually make sure that Mankey is all in tip top shape before fighting your pet rocks. Hadn't really thought about it before that Brock re really literally does just keep pet rocks for a living. And his name does also have rock in it. Brock has the demeanor of someone who keeps pet rocks. That, you know, kind of true. He was like, this is the role he was born to play. And yeah, to be fair, he has trained his pet rocks exceptionally well. I don't think any of us can claim to have trained a pet rock to be as good at fighting as Brock has. Let's see how they hold up. I'm Brock. I'm Pewter Jim's leader. Or Pewter's gym leader. Either one. I believe in rock hard defense and determination. That's why my Pokemon are all the rock type. You still want to challenge me? Fine then. Show me your best. Now they got his sprite looking way more like in the anime. More accurate. And a much more on model Geodude. That is a much better Geodude sprite. <laughs> Lost the pompadour and is now looking much more professional. Flinched even. Mankey. Rocking it out here. Let's see how you do. Good looking Onyx as well. Be kicked.
Hmm. Big hit incoming, I suspect. But flinched? Mankey! Flawless victory! I took you for granted. As proof of your victory, here's the boulder badge. That's an official Pokemon League badge. Its bearers Pokemon become more powerful. The technique Flash can now be used anytime. That went exceptionally well. Now wait, take this with you. TM34. A TM contains a technique that can be taught to Pokemon. A TM is good only once, so when you use one to teach a new technique, pick the Pokemon carefully. TM34 contains Bide. Your Pokemon will absorb damage in battle, then pay it back double. Good thing he flinched. That could have hurt a lot. <laughs> we win. I was going to say we should go to the Poke Center, but, um, don't really need to, do we? Mankey did too good. Let's go to the museum instead. More educational. Oh, does Bide take three turns? Oh, yeah. That Onyx was doomed. It's $50 for a child ticket. Would you like to come in? Right. Thank you. Aerodactyl Fossil, a primitive and rare Pokemon. That is one magnificent fossil. Kabutops, fossil, a primitive and rare Pokemon. We should look at the spaceship this time. We have a space exhibit now. Meteorite that fell on Mount Moon. Moonstone? Moonstone? What's so special about it? July 20th, 1969. The first lunar landing. I bought a color TV to watch it. Space Shuttle Columbia. Wow. <laughs> I want a Pikachu. It's so cute. I asked my daddy to catch me one. Nah. I'd like to get that Pikachu off you, but it's too attached to you. Is it? Well, look at that. You do actually like me now. We are growing closer as little friends. <laughs> what does that say? Ah, if your Pokemon listened to a master like me, they'd be much more powerful. I'm sure, Zote. I want to... You know how, like, certain fan artists kind of do this thing where they take characters from some game and they, like, Pokemon trainer, like, gym leaderify them? Right? Like, you kind of take them and say, like, all right, here's the Pokemon this character would use. I've seen... There is an artist on Twitter who is doing, like, a lot... Taking a lot of Final Fantasy XIV main characters and kind of doing fan art with them with the Pokemon who they would use with their kind of lineup. Which is a fun way to kind of, like, get... present the character, right? I am one... <laughs> what would Zote's roster of six be? Fun fact about the fossils. In red and blue, when you trigger the missing no-glitch, its sprite was based on the player's name. Some poor kids were surfing near Cinnabar, and that Kabutop skeleton popped out of them. <laughs> Magikarp for Zote. Some of that... That does sort of fit. Uh... Who is this artist? Because I need to see Pokemon Trainer Alfie. I'm gonna... I don't know their name. Like, I've... Oh, it's been a year since I saw it, but I'm now going to look. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV Pokemon Trainer Art. And to see if that Google leads to anything? I'm seeing several uh, different people's Art of this. So it's apparently it's a thing that several people do. 
But uh, definitely, that's a Google search I recommend doing later if that idea intrigues you, because it's a very good art prompt. Yeah, Zote would, Zote would go for, like, a Magikarp on Zote's team definitely tracks. Uh, I can see various bugs also tra working. Let's see. What's our inventory looking like before we go wandering off? We have our town map. We have our antidotes. Need more Pokeballs for sure. Maybe only that. The Magikarp for Zote thing works even better because, yeah, eventually Magikarp does become Gyarados, which is very strong, which sort of also fits the Grey Prince Zote extreme strength aspect that <laughs> surfaces later. Zote is just youngster Joey with a 99th percentile Rotata. <laughs> Zote would definitely be about Pokemon that project strength, whether they are actually good or not, but they... <laughs> they, they... They seem like they would be strong just from the look of them. Strong intimidation factor. Onyx is probably a good fit, yeah. Let's see, a few more of these. I don't think we'll need... I'll grab an Awakening in case... I can't remember if we can run into a... I don't think we can run into a Jigglypuff in Mount Moon, but there might be a Clefairy or something. I don't remember what we'll run into in there, but... Maybe also one Escape Rope. In case it starts to suck in there. Actually, no way. We can find one in there, I think. I'm gonna save the money. How many Pokeballs did I... How many did I buy there? Uh, six is probably enough to cover for now. Zoe would ha actually have a really good Pokemon, but, ne but they never listened to him. <laughs> that could also... That could also work pretty well for Zoe, I think. All that to say, I, I am here for the sort of fan art prompt of character from this other franchise, but as a Pokemon gym leader, who's their lineup and what's their, like, sort of Pokemonified costuming and design. That's a pretty fun prompt. But onward! We got a lot of trainers to fight along the way. You looked at me, didn't you? Which is good, because we need to train up some more of our team. This would be a good stretch to get Metapod stronger. And start working a little bit more on Pikachu also. Mankey should not be in our front row anymore. Mankey's not going to be... our frontline fighter for a little bit. Oh, that's another good prompt. Like, bug-type Pokémon reimagined as Hollow Knight bugs. It's like a different idea, but equally good. Yeah, Pikachu, stay out there. If you can't finish the job, then... Someone else will get the experience. It'll work out. Down you go. Okay. Uh... Let's 
It's not a great matchup for Metapod, but they might just pull it off. Assuming they can land a hit, which they might struggle to a little bit. There we go. Oh boy. Don't love our odds. Yeah, this ain't happening. All right, Mankey, finish the job. Or other Pidgey. Pidgey, you should be able to do this. That Pikachu voice clip on the KO is rough on the soul. Agreed. They de you definitely don't want your poor Pikachu to faint. If you can avoid hearing that sound. Letting Pikachu faint too often reduces its affection. Also good to know. Though I suspect, given we're going to have Pikachu out and doing good work on the regular, I think uh, maintaining affection should not be too hard for us. But still. During this crucial early time in our friendship, we shouldn't let Pikachu take too many lumps. And you can't get the other three starters if the affection's too low. That's right, I forgot that factor. So, all right, remind me. So, the three starters we can get, I think, Squirtle. One of them's in Cerulean. One of them... Dang it, I don't remember where the, the three starters are and how you get them. Worth looking into, I suppose. Pikachu, how are you feeling? Still okay? Well, good. You're a good sport. to in Viridian Forest. Show me your best bugs. And I will show you a bird with no sense of humor. You vaguely remember Bulbasaur in a house near the Pokemon Center in Vermilion? Two are in Cerulean, one in Vermilion. We'll find them. They are destined to join our team. Ah. Finish it, Pidgey. Weedle next. Okay. Metapod, you can share the experience on this one. <laughs> you like that all of us are on Twitch, right? So we have the internet, but we're also nerds, so we kind of feel like we have to go by memory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we would all prefer to be able to remember this fact than have to go look it up. That's a cute Weedle, though. Pokemon bar trivia would be a good time. I would be lousy at it, but it's a good theme for bar trivia. There we go. Get the Metapod back in there. And then someone else. 
to actually win. Eh, Pikachu might have to get substituted out too early. Mankey, you can do this. I feel like last time you played, you tried to pick up Bulbasaur and Cerulean before the Misty fight. My memory may be faulty. Yeah, like, something about that was familiar to me, too. Like, they don't let... You can't take the Bulbasaur until after that fight's over, right? Which makes sense, because Bulbasaur would potentially make that gem very easy. Only two levels to go. I only have red, but you can fight Jesse and James in this one, right? Yes. In Pokemon Yellow, they did add Jesse and James. Pretty much any little touch they could make that brings this Gen 1 experience more in line with the anime, they did. It's sort of like a really good early demonstration of Nintendo and, like, kind of Pokemon companies' approach to the brand. They're, like, always trying to do what they can to convert casual fans into the hardcore fans slowly. But also, like, anybody new that they draw in with some particular Pokemon thing, they try to also provide something for that fan to then move to next, right? Like, it's, it's kind of why they release, like, a, a new generation of games, but also that comes along with a new TV series, new line of cards, new line of merch, new everything, new new manga. Like, the, the anime had taken off, and so they released another Pokemon game that was more like the anime to attract more of those fans over, like, hey, you like that anime? Check it out. You can have a Pikachu in this one, too. It is time for Shorts Kid. Hi, I like shorts. They're comfy and easy to wear. Still a very good bit of pixel art, that youngster. Shorts Kid knows what they like. And that's admirable. They are comfy. Yes, they are. Oh, thanks for the 16 months, Mr. Philip. Shorts! <laughs> uh, Ekins next. Let's start by getting Metapod in there. Metapod should really be up front, henceforth. It's a very happy looking Ekins. I kind of love it. Pidgey, let's see how you do. Look at that happy snake. <laughs> the very happy snake who's not playing around. This is not a good matchup we've got going here. Yeah, we'll let Pidgey get fainted and so that uh, only Metapod and Pikachu share the experience on this one. Pidgey can catch up later. Get him, Pikachu! Almost.
There we go. Better. Good work, Pikachu. Thanks for taking one for the team, Pidgey. I don't believe it. All right, let's... Go take Pidgey to the vet. So I'm curious, when it comes time for Let's Go, will you do Pikachu or Eevee? There's a good question. Very good question. I might do Eevee, because I've gotten some footage of Let's Go Pikachu before, or at least like the first hour or two of it. And since I've got that already in, like, covered, I mean, I'll just do Eevee instead. We'll see, though. Hey, Max Atreides, thank you for the six months. Well, this row of trainer fights is definitely doing wonders for our finances. It's going to help with getting stocked up a bit better. Maybe one more of those. Yes, I am fueling the local economy. With my battle winnings. Are you a trainer? Let's fight. God, I keep forgetting to put Caterpie up front. Dang it. Well, whatever. You can take the experience for this one, Mikey. You being strong will ensure we are protected in case we run into too many Geodudes out there. In the mountains. Kakuna. This is the perfect time for Metapod. Battle of the Goo. Still no Nidoran, though. And we have both of them. I just know that I'm going to be... Sw like, that neither of them are going to be in my crew long term, so I'm not really bothering to invest time leveling them. We got, Yeah, we got bonkers lucky early on with early encounters. We just back-to-back, -back going into a patch of grass, got Mankey, Nidoran female, Nidoran male, boom. In and out, go. It's pretty silly. And yeah, we're kind of like taking some inspiration from Ash's uh, lineup in the anime for our uh, core crew in yellow here, because it feels right. Fun fact, Pokemon Yellow made both a lot of the low catch rates and many areas even lower while increasing the odds of everything else. So rare finds in yellow are even rare. Wow. I don't know how many of the ones I've caught are actually rare finds thus far. Maybe none of them, but uh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I feel like this particular Pokemon entry leans so hard in the anim in the direction of the anime that it feels appropriate to do the same. But future gens are going to be fun, though, because that's when we're going to start, like... In future gens, we're going to start running into not only way more Pokemon in general, but also way more that I'm not familiar with, and so, like going to be a lot of first time meetings for me and choosing what that team is will be an actual like discovery as we go I can kind of plan out what I want to have in my final crew for gen 1 beyond that no idea we're getting there 
Just a few more tackles. What game is next? I think after we beat this, so that'll which will take several streams at least. Uh, Pokemon Gold, I think. Because I've got footage of Silver. Dan Jones helped me with footage of Silver. Will you also be releasing Butterfree? Probably not releasing, but I might swap Butterfree out in the lineup for, uh... Somebody else. Potentially. Later in the game, if it makes sense. Uh, Pidgey, you get some experience here. As someone who jumped from Crystal to Sword, I'm really excited to follow along with this playthrough series. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for, for that, the same thing. Like, I'm glad there's some folks coming on this journey who are in a similar boat as me. Who, like know a good bit about the beginning and a good bit about the end, but everything in between is kind of a blank. Speaking of, in gold and silver, the Pokemon counter tables are partially controlled by the system clock to different rates in morning versus day versus night. Is that something you plan to fiddle with? I didn't know about that, honestly. So maybe? I don't know how much I'll... I don't know how much I will be actively fiddling with it, but especially since recording on Thursdays, we tend to go for a pretty long time. I'm guessing we will naturally span kind of like a a couple of those time slots each each session, so I don't know, possibly so since I don't have a favorite Pokemon yet do I have a favorite type, like grass or ghost, hmm Battle of the Goo Part 2. Uh, I have fondness for Psychic, but that is artificially inflated by how OP Psychic is in one of the only gens I've played. Uh, I like Fairy a lot. I found, like, a lot of the Fairy-type designs really appeal to me. I'm sure you've heard this time to time, but I'm most excited to see you do Black and White and Legends Arceus eventually. Scarlet, Violet are wonderful too. This just has me very excited. <laughs> I'm glad you're excited. I share that excitement. There, I'm really looking forward to this journey. Uh, like, I'm in. This is as early and primitive as the experience, the play experience, will be for the entire time. And I'm already having a good time. So, like, it's only just going to get more fun from here. And I'm going to run out of tackles before this fight ends. So save us all a little time. Gen 2 and the remakes are excellent. That is what I hear. Uh, that seems to be frequently agreed upon. few more rounds of fast air and we'll have it. Heart Gold and Soul Silver are considered the best Pokemon games by many and for good reason. Yeah, I hear that opinion frequently and I'm excited to get to them. I'm guessing if we're playing gold, then I'll probably switch when we get around to those remakes and do like Soul Silver instead. Play a version of gold and a version of silver. Silver. Probably do the same thing for all the gens, actually. So whenever we get to Fire Red and Leaf Green, do Fire Red. Uh, whichever one between Diamond and Pearl I do, do the, uh, the other one for Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. Finally! Earned that level 10. If I had new Pokemon, I would have won. 
I kind of agree. The fact that you have exclusively bugs feels like you are artificially limiting yourself. Alright, Metapod, you can go up front, but we won't actually use you for these fights. We'll just let you mooch. That look you gave me, it's so intriguing. How are we factoring in remakes into the cycle? We will do those as well. I don't think generally that the remakes... Hmm? I don't think the remakes introduce new animated elements. Usually that weren't already in a, introduced in another game from that same generation that was in the main line, but I am not 100% confident of that. In fact, I'm not confident of that at all as soon as we start thinking outside this fan, the context of battles. So, so yeah, we will do those too. Uh, go ahead, Pidgey. Yeah, but like Heart Gold and Soul Silver having follower Pokemon is a really big deal, big addition. So like, those will absolutely be like important entries to include. Pidgey, I feel like you're gonna get painted by the rat. I am a prophet. Follower Pokemon are so good, I hope they can kind of figure out how to eventually work that into just being kind of standard across all these games. It's such a lovely thing. Scarlet Violet have them? Excellent! That's right, that does sound familiar, actually. I played so little of the, of, uh, that one. Which was a surprise to me, honestly. Like, I was really thinking that when Scarlet and Violet came out that I, it's likely I would be doing those on Playframe pretty quickly, but then when they released in a pretty rough state, I changed plans, which was probably for the best. Ouchie. Goodness. I guess we're spreading our levels across several Pokemon now, so... We're falling a little behind the curve in places. Alright, Pikachu, you can, uh... You can swap out. Always feels weird that they nailed 3D following Pokemon and Let's Go and then just couldn't do it again. Yeah, understandable. Although, like... It, actually, it is pretty understandable. It was just 150 Pokemon, which is, scope-wise, much more manageable. We better go heal up. Yeah, every choice... Every choice around the animation in... Pokemon games always comes down to scope management. It's like kind of true in all games, but it's especially for a franchise like Pokemon. And Game Freak has historically been really smart about how they've handled that. All the Pokemon are already rigged in the game for fights, aren't they? Oh, sure. Like, they have animation rigs for all of the Pokemon, but that's just a small part of the work required for actually getting follower Pokemon. But especially because now a lot of the work they're doing, since a lot of uh, Pokemon games now are embracing the idea of Pokemon being something you actually see and encounter out in the world instead of being random encounters, uh, a lot of the animation set that they would need for Pokemon to be followers are going to be... It's more likely that the animation set they are already making for the other features in the game cover most, if not all, of the animations they would need to make to make follower Pokemon happen. So I expect it's going to be more and more common as an added feature. And it, again, just having the assets doesn't necessarily, that's not the full extent of the work either. There's also just the design and actual implementation work involved in making follower Pokemon happen. 
but, like... I feel like it's going to be increasingly feasible, given that a lot of the added work entailed in creating follower Pokémon is going to be something that is... that other features in the game... It, that overlaps with other features in the game. Doing IK for all the Pokémon must be a nightmare. I'd honestly be really surprised if they do IK on Pokémon. Maybe for, like, the very rare occasional Pokémon that has a... like, odd structure, like, that would kind of require it. But I'm guessing in most cases they wouldn't. Sorry for repeating on myself, but I found thought you'd find it amusing. In Scarlet Violet, part of why follower Pokemon can't always keep up with you is because many were so authentically animated that they're way slower than you, even when they just lightly jog. <laughs> That's really cute. And, uh, it, it's kind of cute that they choose to set the Pokemon's move speed intentionally to what, to kind of like match their in-world animation for how quickly they can move, because they could very easily make it to where Pokemon's move speed behind your character is a constant, regardless of the Pokemon, regardless of size, and uh, so they'll always be keeping up with you exactly the same, but their animation may not look right. There may be a lot of foot sliding, or it may look weird. I, like, there is something fun about not all follower Pokemon being able to keep up with you. Like, <laughs> that's cute. Okay, uh, more fights, though. Let's see. We're so close to having our OP Butterfree. So close. If a Pokemon box on the PC gets full, just switch to another box. Words to live by. You, I don't think I fought you. Hey, you're not wearing shorts. <laughs> I didn't know we had two shorts fans on this stretch of road. These two should meet. Level 14 Spear, oh goodness. Kind of seems like shorts are like the accessory you wear in this stretch of road to show like gang allegiance. Uh, all right, Mankey, you can finish this. Kind of spreading the Pokemon or the experience a little thin here, but better than letting Pikachu faint, I suppose. Goodness. Not a good matchup, it turns out. Very bad matchup, it turns out. Pidgey, can you close this deal? A good depiction of fandom. One shorts user tells you why they're passionate, the other berates you for not liking it enough. <laughs> there we go. Lost, lost, lost! That took more of our crew to win than I expected. Yes. Metapod evolved into Butterfree and learned confusion right away. And with that, we win the game. Once you have Scarlet and Violet, there's an entire DLC area where you can just run around as the Pokemon in the overworld and with whatever silly walking animation they have set up. That's great. Excited to see. Yeah. 
It's confused how it became butterfly from soup. <laughs> we all are. But yeah, it is pretty bonkers that you do get confusion immediately at level 10. Like, it was pretty OP as an early move in red and blue. And then you had to wait until level 12. But now... We can confuse at whim. Yes, our butterfly has completed its soup arc. And is ready to conquer the world. You can fight my new Pokémon! Apparently insects can carry memories through their soup phase, which is just wild to me. Yeah, that like, that's honestly what makes it so bonkers. It's wacky enough that they go from being an organism to turning into soup and then just becoming a different organism. But the fact that they retain memories in the soup phase, across the soup phase, Nuts. Seems like that shouldn't work. All right. Pidgey, let's start working on you a little bit more. Pikachu will get Pikachu's turn in Mount Moon. Bug broth is not something you want it to have a mental image for. It isn't the, a pleasant mental image, I agree. Just take the L, Metapod. Know when you're beat. There's some real shonen protagonist determination on these Metapods. just hear the My Hero Academia soundtrack playing behind every fight. Eek, did you touch me? I was two tiles away, ma'am. Pikachu is my witness. But that is a cute Jigglypuff, though. I approve. Look at that Jigglypuff. Here's a fun question. Are you going to include Stadium 1, 2, and Coliseum games in this excursion? Yes, but only probably for one stream. We're not going to do, like, full playthroughs of spinoffs. Uh, but it will be useful having footage of other Pokemon games coming out around the same time as these mainline entries for context of what kind of the other games we're doing animation-wise. So I will be doing a stream of each as we kind of get to them. I can't remember the order, but, like, whether Pokemon Gold comes next or whether we'll be jumping, like, right into Coliseum or Stadium? Stadium, I guess? After we're done with Yellow? I can't remember the exact order. But we'll definitely have some spin-offs before long. Stadium 1 technically, fir technically first? So, okay, so it'll probably be Stadium. A stream of Stadium after this. After we beat Yellow. Snap won't be far behind.
Stadium does legitimately have some great animation. For the time, even. Like, even compared to other games, like, Stadium is pretty impressive with their, uh, sort of, like, vertex animation, uh, method they used. Legitimately impressive. Whew, I better take a rest. Oh, that tunnel from Cerulean takes a lot out of you. You said it. I am not looking forward to that tunnel. <laughs> Which we have now, I think, arrived at. There's, like, a focus center up. Oh, thank goodness, yes. Yeah, the, the limited scope of Pokemon uh, Stadium definitely does, like, they do benefit from that. In fact, I suspect that's why, I think the, for its time, I think the animation of Pokemon Stadium is actually considerably better than Coliseum. Even though Coliseum has more animation, I think Stadium's is, like, Coliseum's is less impressive within the context of its time compared to other games. Stadium is just legit. It's got some great animation in there for an N64. Anything neat in this grass? I don't think so. Stadium has a lot of form over function. Animations are delightful, but they can really drag the 500th time. Yeah, there is there is that consideration, too. <laughs> no, we don't have a Spiro, do we? Would you like to live in my computer? may faint you, but... Spira might be the better bird over Pidgey. Yeah, I've never really known how these two compare. I feel like if ever I was going to use one of the birds in one of these games in Gen 1, I always defaulted to Pidgey since Pidgey was so early on, but then I also replaced both of them pretty often, I feel like. Inept at flying high, however, it can fly around very fast to protect its territory. Well, hello, other bird. Pikachu, I think it might be time to swap you to the front row. There's about to be a lot of bats. Like, too many bats. Has never anyone done a Pokemon challenge where you have to catch every Pokemon in the same order Ash encounters them? <laughs> That's an interesting challenge mode, which I guess yellow would make easiest. I almost missed that. Sorry. Thank you for uh, the six months. Rock would be literally impossible. Oh, yeah, because Ash doesn't get the Mankey, like... Ash gets to that gym well before having actual Pokemon he needs for it. All Ash had was a Pikachu and a Caterpie. What a scrub. <laughs> How did that kid get to where he is today? I get well, you know, I guess perhaps that's more credit to him. He's like... Like, I remember in grade school that, a, like... Uh, like me like me and other kids would I feel like 
like, make fun of the kids who are studying all the time or who have to study all the time to do well on tests and things like that, not realizing that, in fact, those kids are, like, actually developing a skill, or, like, are, one, developing the skill of studying, and two, are more, like, it's more impressive the work they're doing. That's the thing that it doesn't take long to get out of childhood to sort of realize, oh, wait, they were more impressive than I was, actually. <laughs> You can't imagine me making fun of anyone ever. No, like, I like I was a brat kid, like like most kids were. <laughs> and frankly, I have become I have strived to become a much better person as an adult than I was as a like as a kid and teen. I grew up in a very sheltered bubble, very like conservative, uh, like religious, just bubble of a place. Uh, and like I like loved my family, loved a lot of like my of childhood, but I was very not exposed to a lot of kinds of people in the world and a lot of experiences, and that upbringing led to me having a lot of extremely close-minded ideals and perspectives around the world that I spent the second half of my life trying to unlearn. <laughs> Still in progress, honestly. I'm sure I'm not alone in this experience, though. <laughs> I'm sure many of you can relate. All right, it's time for caves. You seem like the sweetest of people and knowing you came from a sheltered conservative environment makes that especially impressive. A lot of folks from this backgrounds are content to have not widened their perspectives. It's kind of you to say, and I like, I am glad that I have improved since then, but it, Having come from that uh, kind of background, and that is a much better Zubat sprite. Having come from that kind of background and uh, had to kind of unlearn it, I have. It honestly gives me a lot more sympathy for people who are who kind of like grow up in those bubbles and who have a difficult time, like have a difficult time adapting to the information they don't know, or, like, just have that unfamiliarity with people on the outside. Because, like, I definitely didn't meet any, like, I probably didn't meet a, like, a gay person until I was in college, or rather, I did not meet somebody who would felt safe uh, being out as a gay person, especially in the, like, 90, like, late 80s, early 90s, like, around that era, like, until I was out into college. Uh, it's, and it's honestly more sad than that I definitely was encountering people who were gay but did not feel safe and probably weren't safe <laughs> being out about that. Uh, and it's not in that, like, in that time I... I did not have any active hatred or dislike for gay people. They just seemed like such a faraway, distant, foreign kind of... Like, like people from any part of the world who you've never met and don't really know anything about. They just... It's hard to, like, conceive of them. Uh, and it wasn't until I got out of that bubble and started actually meeting gay people and then getting a sense for how they were experiencing life outside of my bubble and the treatment they were getting from people inside my bubble that I suddenly started having the horrifying realization of, oh no, we're the baddies. <laughs> but even after that point, I had a lot of learning to do. I, like, I often say I would not get along very well with teenage me today. And in large part for that reason. I grew up in a similar bubble and then turned out I was gay and disabled and had the same oh no we're the baddies moment at like 19. Oh boy, that that <laughs> that, that must be that's gotta be even wilder a shock experience. I cannot even imagine. <laughs> if you wouldn't slap teenage you, that means you haven't grown as a person. <laughs> There's kind of some truth to that. It's like the it's like the personality and personal growth version of an artist like the fact that you dislike all the art you made more than a year ago is a sign is good it means you're getting better 
That makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> we got a geodude. We have a pet rock of our own, finally. Commonly found near mountain trails, etc. If you step on one by accident, it gets angry. In fairness, I think most of us could relate to that. Yeah, no, if you're starting out as an artist, folks here in chat are right. Like, growing up to hate your art, late to hate your art and your old art rules, actually. <laughs> it's... Like, you may be frustrated looking at the art, but it's... That it's exactly the arc you want to be following. Suspicious men are in the cave. What about you? <laughs> Joke's on you, I hate my art now. <laughs> Two steps ahead. Geo dude, we'll get you to the Poké Center soon, don't worry. Um, burp, burp, burp. Go for it, Pidgey. Yeah, poor Geodude's just hanging in there. Weedle's so proud of itself. Look at me! <laughs> that does look like a proud little Weedle. There's an enthusiasm to that <laughs> posture. Which is impressive for a worm. Who's getting this experience here? Honestly, Pidgey, keep at it. I feel like there's going to be far fewer advantageous matchups for you than for... Pikachu, Mankey, and uh, Butterfree in the near future. Kakuna does seem more humble by comparison. Like, more reserved. Taking up, like, trying to take up less space. Creative interpretation of 8-bit Pokemon posture <laughs> is a fun animation exercise. judgmental glare. Or you could read skepticism in there as well. It's like, hmm, are you sure? <laughs> What's your source on that? Pidgey, go. Hey, you learned a new thing. <laughs> Kakuna and Metapod are just in a constant state of using bide. Like they're doing, the, like playing the real long game. <laughs> They'll have their revenge arc later. We're poisoned right now, aren't we? Well, we're not far from the center. We'll just put up with the flashing a little bit. The flashing's not as bad in color, actually. Since it's kind of changing color hues a little bit instead of just black and white. That little flash there was not so bad. Uh, 
Pikachu, is it possible for you to not outright faint the Zubat? Wow, look at you! Like a surgeon with that thunder jolt. Get in the ball. <laughs> yes, the zoo battening has well and truly begun. But at least we have one of our own. Emits ultrasonic cries while it flies. They act as a sonar used to check for objects in its way. Still not the most pleasant flash, but might way less obnoxious. All right, Pikachu, just settle in. You're gonna be farming a lot of experience off a lot of bats in these caves. There is something, like, almost tactilely uncomfortable about effects like these that are distorting the screen, or shaking, or whatever the screen, showing slowly ticking damage happening to your crew. Especially as a kid. Like, it feels more visceral as a kid. It's not pleasant as an adult. But, like, yeah, there's folks... <laughs> there's folks in chat now who are kind of, like, talking about, like, being scared as a kid because of some of, like, the effects, like, Screen Shake and Diamond and Pearl and things like that when their Pokémon are poisoned, and... Yeah, no, like, I... That feels true. Oh, there... Yeah, by the way, there's a poll going on for which fossil we take, so... If you have strong feelings between Dome or Helix, now is the time. What? I'm waiting for my friends to find me here. Look at that Clefairy. Pink Pokemon come out looking so cute in Pokemon Yellow. <laughs> the shade of pink is just and red is just right. And the fossil we take this time actually matters, because we'll actually get far enough in the game to do something about it. Ow, Clefairy. Alright, fine. Mankey, can you do anything about this? If not, Geodude, I trust. Don't miss Mankey. Yeah, no, this Clefairy is hitting very hard. Bonker's strong right hook on this Clefairy. We're sleepy now, though. Good thing I bought that one Awakening. Are y'all intentionally tying the vote again? We're just going to make you vote a second time. That's using the old noodle, Yen. Saving your vote for the last second to break the tie. Smart. Ooh, Helix win. Congratulations to our Helix fans.
Your day is here. You need to use some levels, little Pikachu. Level 10 is not going to keep you alive in the Cerulean Gym. Misty will have you killed. the encounter rate in this cave. <laughs> you can't even buy... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not dispel. Uh, repels, thank you. It's not dispels, repels. You can't even buy them yet, can you? I don't remember seeing them in the shop. You just gotta tough it out. I definitely do want Quick Attack on this Pikachu. I'm inclined to get rid of thun of Tail Whip. Tail Whip or Growl, which is... I mean, they're both neither staying long-term, but which one do we get rid of first? Tail whip is cuter. I can I'm I'm barely using either of these moves if we're just keeping one of them around. I'm down for that. How intimidating is a Pikachu growl gonna be, really? If anything, a Pikachu growl sounds like something we'd all want to hear. Sounds adorable. What? Don't sneak up on me! <laughs> Hear me roar, I'm scary. Oh, poor Pichu. Geodude, I think that you are going to help a lot against... The occasional electric type we bump into. Does Ash have, like, a rock or ground type? Does he get, like, a Diglett at any point or something? Do you, does he get a Geodude? Gets an Onyx and a Dig. Right, he does get an Onyx at one point, doesn't he? Okay. Is that, like... I frequently have a Geodude in my main lineup. Just for how good, like, Rock is. Like, Geodude is great at getting you through a lot of these encounters in early game. But if we're role-playing... Oh, that's right, the Onyx is Brock's. I'll be honest, I actually did not watch nearly as much of the Pokemon anime as a kid as I'd have liked to. <laughs> hey! Calvabarian friends, welcome! Pop quiz, Calvabarian friends, do we change Pokemon? No, I won't tell you what we're fighting. <laughs> Calvaberry says yes. All right. <laughs> I don't remember what we're fighting either. We'll wing it. Uh, but for, given that they fought us with an electric type last time, we probably won't literally wing it, I think. 
Pidgey or Spearow would be murdered. Uh... Hey, Butterfree, you go in. Oh, it's a Voltorb. Yeah, probably good we didn't throw in... a poor little Pidgey. Maybe we can confuse it. Yeah, fun sound, I know. Who doesn't love a screeching orb? What kind of super nerd chooses this for a pet? I don't see the appeal. It's like, yeah, I want this following me around every day. It's like the op- like, anyone who owns a dog gets to be the person who, like, everyone's coming up. It's like, oh, wants to approach it. Oh, can I pet the dog? Oh, it's so cute and all that. Like, this is the opposite. So I guess if you want people to leave you alone, carrying a little screeching orb on a leash is a great way to do it. Hey, thanks for subscribing, Jules the Wombat Lover. Welcome. And thank you for the 18 months, Calvaberry. <laughs> Apparently y'all have started this hype train on me. <laughs> Very much appreciated. Never thought I would use nerd as a derogatory word. I don't generally, but it also feels very, like... We're so far past the point of nerds... ...really being... ...a persecuted group in any- to any degree. <laughs> And if anything, nerds are, like, nerds and things nerds like have been on top of the world for so much now and are, like, the big, like, everyone's kind of a nerd now. So it's... Feels like a fairly innocuous insult, given it kind of applies to, like, everyone's a nerd of something. Everyone is a nerd about something. Probably numerous things. Like, we haven't, we've never really called it sports nerds, but, we'll, like, we've all been surrounded by sports nerds our whole life. Many of us are those sports nerds. And that's great. All four people being really passionate and into a thing. Yeah, that's, that's kind of why I lean, uh, like, I'm game for using nerd, because it, it doesn't even feel mean. It just feels like a... <laughs> you really like a thing. doesn't catch his first rock type until, like, the eighth series? Whoa! I guess if he, like... Ash is really leaning on the company he keeps. Brock has him covered. Like, there's no scenario in which Ash was going to be in serious danger because he didn't have a rock type around because he literally had Brock... He had the... the boulder... like, the pewter gym leader hanging out with him all the time. Ash's real strength was that he rolled deep. And there's a lesson in that somewhere. Actually, Pidgey, you keep getting experience from this. I guess that is kind of the lesson, yeah, that the real strength is the friends are making along the way. 
and the Pokemon they have on them. That does also sort of pr like kind of provide an in lore reason for why Ash takes so long to become a master, though. Yeah, I agree. Like, <laughs> he's had strong friends to help him and to learn from, but left him less equipped to stand entirely on his own. That took a little longer. He got there, though. Does Ash give up on the catch em all goal pretty early in the anime? Like, does, does he actually, like, express kind of the less interest in that as he goes? Or is it, like, a thing where he just clearly he's this is not his priority anymore? <laughs> is it kind of more in his actions? Or is that more of, like, a stated change in how he how he feels as he goes? Because, yeah, it does feel like someone should have told the theme song guy. <laughs> Giving them a heads up. In the Pokemon Generation anime shorts, Red does make, uh, very true on the catch em all goal and actually captures everything in Kanto pretty much. Oh, cool. It's fun learning about a... <laughs> franchise that I have always, like, I've liked for a long time, but never, like, experienced a lot of. I'm catching up on a lot. Kind of like every time I streamed Hollow Cure and learned way more about VTubers and Hollow Live lore. <laughs> Just secondhand. <laughs> It's way bigger in here than I thought. Also a very good Otter Sprite. Very similar to the previous Otter Sprite. That one seems just only slightly modified. What else is strong against grass this gen? Like, I'm not gonna have a fire Pokemon for a while. Uh, and I feel like I'm always bad at remembering what's strong against grass. Bird is strong against grass, right. Or flying, rather. Is poison good against grass? Or maybe Gust is actually... Oh, Gust is a normal move. Right. Right. I'm, I'm very excited to finally get to the end of this long journey. Uh, <laughs> be playing Gen 9. And we'll all look back and laugh at how far I've come. How, like, these basic type matchup things I don't have figured out or memorized entirely are in second nature to me in that future time. Can't wait. Oh, so like all the grass types are poison too, and especially in Gen 1, right? So Psychic works on them. But of course, our super move. Yeah, I agree, Arc of the Enclave. I also think Gust shouldn't be a normal move. <laughs> I'll allow it, but I'm squinting at it at the same time. I have a sneaking suspicion Gen 9 might, might not be the newest game by the time we're done. <laughs> that is entirely possible.
Especially in the likely event that I... <laughs> that I get a new animation gig between now and then, which will leave much less time for streaming. I'm kind of taking advantage of the time right, free time now. We'll see how far we can get before then, though. <laughs> I appreciate the offer of writing a referral twiddle. <laughs> I appreciate the thought. Did we get any of that Vancouver snow today? It definitely flurried a little bit. I don't know if any of it stuck. And the blinds in this room are drawn right now for sound absorption reasons. Should I have gone to that ladder, like, 20 minutes ago. Eh. Gen 1 Pidgey doesn't learn a flying move till 31? That's an awful long time to wait to have to actually become a flying type. 28 if you actually leave it as a Pidgey that long. Gracious. The move pool in Gen 1 is pretty limited. <laughs> a lot of gaps in there that they would fill with time. Don't confuse my Pikachu. He's so small. And faintable. Oof. Let's swap you out, perhaps, Pikachu. We let that get a little unnecessarily close. That's why Spiro is better than Pidgey in Gen 1. That makes total sense. Thanks for closing the deer deal there, Butterfree. Pikachu, let's get you sorted out. You're a mess. Better. And while we're at it, Pidgey, you too. I am kind of glad, like, the nicknames were great. I am glad, glad that we've returned to the not nicknaming for the footage reasons, and also because I'm going to be so much better at actually, like, remembering and internalizing these Pokemon names as we get to new gens now. <laughs> it's going to help a lot. And, of course... We can keep nicknaming them all we want. Might not have a nickname in game, but this honestly, this kind of like makes it work even better. When you're giving a nickname in a Pokemon game, you have to have you have to name them before you've gotten to truly know them. Before they've sort of developed any lore around themselves or any history. Now we have the means to like, we have time to let them kind of grow into an appropriate name for themselves. Amazing news for enjoyers of good game design. Legends Arceus and Scarlet Violet allow you to change nicknames anytime and remember any learned moves whenever you want just from the menu screen. I'm so glad they changed that. Both of them. Both of those things are great changes in my opinion. We're pulling a big job here. Get lost, kid. Is this Pikachu also named Watson, or does it have a different unofficial nickname? Honestly, that's for us to decide, I think. Does this Pikachu feel like a Watson? Or 
Or are they their own new and distinct character? All Pikachus are now Watson. That's true, we can also just come up with alternate nicknames <laughs> for a lot of these Pokemon kind of across the board and just keep using them. And that, like, adds a new kind of continuity, right? They're returning characters every time we encounter them again. Hey, guys, we, it's Watson! We found Watson! <laughs> we gotta catch Watson! <laughs> that is an option available to us. Do you think after this... When you've learned the ins and outs, you will take, tackle a Nuzlocke run. Maybe so. Maybe by the time I have completed all of these games once, I will finally feel equipped to try it. We could even do it on the main channel, because I don't think it'll last very long. <laughs> That'll be a fun one-off, right? Kind of like how if we ever do... Like, the only way we can do a Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough on Playframe is if we do that new... Sort of like a permadeath mode. Where a party wipe just ends the game. That one I feel like we could make time for. Honor mode, that's what it's called, thank you. Spirit Fair was a Nuzlocke run if you think about it. <laughs> that does cast it in a different light, doesn't it? What's my favorite Pokemon so far of the ones I know? Hmm. Eevee just for the versatility of, like, the varied potential of that Eevee contains. There's a lot of fairy types I've really liked, like, the... Whatever the... Whatever that cupcake fairy type is, that, like... Uh... I know they're... I don't know if they were... They first arrived in Pokemon Sword and Shield, but I remember definitely having one in the crew for a little while. Slurpuff? Was that the one? Might have been Slurpuff. Or Alchemy. Kind of both. I think I like the... I think Slurpuff is cuter. Or Milsery. Goodness, there's more than I remember. Mankey, kick the rat. Now, don't get all fainted, Pikachu. I'd really prefer you didn't. Yeah, thanks for the 18 months. Ed is everywhere. Don't confuse my poor little Pikachu. It needs levels. What are some other favorites?
I did definitely enjoy, like... What Pokémon was Rosebud in Sword and Shield? Our kind of surprise murderer. <laughs> she was Grass-type, I remember that much. Roselia, right. <laughs> Bloodthirsty. I think, it, like, there are some that are favorites for me for, like, their designs and their look. Some of them become favorites due to experiences. Like, memorable experiences. <laughs> And Rosebud was definitely one of those. What is the name of the new... Like, Wooloos are really cute, but in terms of, like, Sword and Shield editions, the little Corgi is... The little lightning uh, electric Corgi is also very difficult to top. That's very cute. Yamper. Yes. Good to see. This is why I need... This is why I have a lot of work to do when it comes to Pichu. nickname remembering. And then, of course, there's also Pichu. Who can forget? all this, like, the starters in just about every Pokemon gen are so, so good almost across the board. Like, it is rare to come across a weak starter design-wise. Like, what they eventually turn into, lots of variants there. There is always the potential there's always Sobble potential, but... In that initial form... My gosh, the, start the lineup of starters in Gen 9 is so good. Like, if that feels like one of the best lineup of three initial Pokemon. That's like the hardest choice of three, I feel like, any of the gens offer so far. Or at least one of them. It's up there. All three of those starters, like... I like all of them. It is really hard to choose between them. Running a little low on potions here, squad. Eh, we'll hold off. And see. Maybe do a little save. Kind of amazed we got through that whole tunnel without getting interrupted by a bat. Well now, there's a new face. Now things are getting interesting. This we must catch. Probably should have gone ahead and used Thunder Wave while Pikachu was out, but oh well. Yeah, I feel like I remember this being a pretty rare encounter as well. So we're going... playing it pretty safe here. Uh, 
I want it. Even if I'm not gonna use it. Must have. Adored for their cute looks and playfulness. They are thought to be rare, as they do not appear often. Yay! Little kids should leave grown-ups alone. 1% encounter rate on upper floors and 6 on lower floors. That's small numbers both times. Wow. We got lucky. Extremely. Goodness. Eh. All right, Geodude, you got this one. You're gonna have to do a lot of tail whips to knock the defense on this rock down far enough to hurt it too much, rat. Really? Clefairy was almost the mascot of the Pokemon series and is in some very early media? I can see it. Clefairy's kind of got that potential. Hang in there, Geodude. Yeah, did it. Good rock. Now, enough of that noise, please. Better. Yeah, I agree. I think they ultimately made the right choice with Pikachu. It seems to have paid off for them. Ooh, another new face. Pidgey. A light touch with those gusts of wind. Easy does it. Okay, and... Oh! Boy! Why are the bugs so stubborn in this particular, like, Pokemon Yellow? under the ground to gnaw on tree roots. The mushrooms on its back absorb most of the nutrition. Welcome to my hard drive. I'll probably save. I feel like we might run into... I feel like Jesse and James can't be far off, and when we do run into them, I don't know how mean they actually are. Versus how much... HP I have left on this crew. This one's all you, Butterfree.
Be confused, mushroom bug. Oh, I guess you're not poison type. Kind of surprising. Bug grass. Oh, of course. Well, we'll make do. Now, Butterfree, I'd really prefer you rather, like, don't faint here. If you can help it. Hmm. Don't like your odds here. Spiro, you get in here. Not really expecting to use a lot of you here, but... Just need you to get this wrapped up if you don't mind. We are in somewhat dire straits. For getting through the rest of this cave. Might need to bail and grab stock up on potions again. Yeah, might use an escape rope. Hey, look! Another rare encounter that we don't you can you can go. I don't have health for this nonsense. Uh Let's see. You know, it's not ideal. Like, yeah, an escape rope would send us back to the exit of the cave. If I'm remembering right. Hopefully, right? But then we can spend all this cash we've been getting in these fights, get a bunch more potions, and be a lot more equipped to just kind of, like, blaze through here running from fights. Except for Zubats, which Pikachu can farm experience off of. Let's go ahead and do that. That's It'll take a little longer, but I feel a lot better about our odds actually getting through here. And this way we can see twice as many Zubats. For your money. And we could potentially buy repels. I still don't feel like I saw them in the shop, but I might be remembering wrong. We should definitely check. And to this cave's credit, it seems like it has a few more things in here, at least once you get to deeper floors. It's got the Cliff Fairies, it's got the Paris. A little more going on. We'll get all stocked up and we'll try to, like, make it to the other side of Mount Moon before we wrap up tonight. So that we can kick off Thursday's stream not having to spend any more time in Mount Moon. <laughs> How goes Pokemoning? Quite good. We almost made it to the end of... of Mount Moon, but we're running pretty, like, out of potions, and everyone was running pretty low. So I decided to tactical retreat. We're stocking up and going back in stronger than ever. Get some more Pokeballs. Not that we really need them right now. But we might see, like, an Onyx or something. Lots of potions. Potentially repels. Nope. Oh, they do have repels back in Pewtertown. Eh, that's a bit of a hike, huh? Not sure if it's worth it. Or, like, it's all the way back in Viridian, rather. Further back. If they sell repels at all. And they might not yet. Now, we'll be fine. And honestly, 
Still, we can run from anything that's not a Zubat. Anything that is a Zubat, Pikachu can take out, get a little bit more experience on the way into Cerulean. It'll work out. If it's not in Pewter, it's not in Viridian. That makes sense. Now, we're going to make excellent time through this mountain. And, yep, also true. Also true. The fact that we're not fighting trainers again will speed things up considerably. And if we run into any trainers that I somehow didn't bump into the first time through, well then, good. More money. We zoom. Hey, this time we can dip in here and see what on earth was in this. Team Rocket are Pokemon gangsters! <laughs> okay. Uh, ground type. We don't have grass or water right now. So... I don't know, maybe confuse... Even if it doesn't... Even if it's not, like, super effective, it's just pretty strong, so... I feel like it'll still do alright. Yeah. There we go. Hey, nice. We should start learning powder moves right about now. Nice. Good. I don't need... Between String Shot and Harden, I don't think I'm ever going to use Harden. Like, yeah, why would I use Harden? String Shot, I could see maybe if we're just, like, trying to... Do, get, do some debuffs on a really strong Pokemon before someone comes in to finish it, but, like, Harden, I see no point. How would a butterfly even harden? Yeah, it seems like after the cocoon phase, it makes sense for them to forget that one. Mankey, kick the rat. That... that... pixel art of Rattata looks like a Rattata plush. Pixel art of a Rattata plush. <laughs> Very cute. Hey, and you learned Karate Chop. Alright, Pikachu, it's a Zubat. You know what to do. Karate Chop is also a normal move, Gen 1. <laughs> what are you doing, Gen 1? making Karate Chop a normal attack and not a fighting attack. Bonkers. It's like, Gen 1's problems are, like, because I guess because the game is still just so good despite it, all of Gen 1's problems are just charming rather than frustrating. It's just like, go oh, Gen 1. You goof. 
Hello. Welcome, Swishy Head. I'm new. What counts as a spoiler? Honestly, for this, for these playthroughs, not a whole lot. I, I think we try to avoid spoiling story stuff generally, and we like try to avoid spoiling mechanics, so like in ways where it's at least like not just not being backseaty about stuff. But if you're not sure about spoiling, you, it's totally safe to like ask if you're not sure about any particular thing. But uh, for the most part, I'm not too worried about spoilery stuff uh, for Pokemon playthroughs. So you're, you're you're pretty safe. I appreciate you asking though. Very considerate. Story spoilers don't exist until Gen 2, and they don't really, really exist till Gen 4 or 5, I think. <laughs> yeah, it does help that narrative is not really all that, like, key to the Pokemon experience. Like, it is not the strong point of these games for the most part. It may be charming, but it is not why we're coming to Pokemon. blazing through these caves. And I'm sure eventually these Zubats will learn who's boss. They gotta get the hint someday. You've done just enough hobby Game Boy dev to be really impressed that the game's pulled it off. Yeah, I mean, retro games are just so fascinating that way, like, because you know the, the limitations they were under and the clever workarounds they had to come up with to make things work, like, are always so... Why, why am I trying to attack you at all? You're... This is not a fight I even want. Get out of here. There's something up here I miss. We're not even that far off from getting back to where we were when we bailed out. <laughs> hey, thanks for the bits. Appreciate it. Level 15, Pikachu. We're, we're getting somewhere. Double team. I don't... I can never remember if what double team is and whether it's good. Maybe. Okay. Gen 1 double team. Pokemon. Double team is a non-damaging uh, normal type move. In Gen 1... Hang on. It increases the user's evasion by one stage. That doesn't seem great. It's about as good as Tail Whip for casual play. <laughs> and I say... We keep the Tail Whip. Double Team is broken if you abuse it. Well, like, I'm probably not going to keep it still, but... Oh, if you abuse it, but in, like, a very boring way. <laughs> we will probably not use it, so we'll keep our little tail whip for now. Abandon learning Double Team, yes. Give me the big thunder moves. No heals, only damage. Let's go. about caught up to where we left off. That didn't take long at all. Hey, y'all were right about not having to deal with the trainers really, uh, <laughs> speeding it up, huh?
Just what a weird bit of the music. <laughs> I said it in a previous stream, but like Gen 1 music just oscillates back and forth between the like most catchy earbugs in the world and just kind of vaguely haunting <laughs> and uncomfortable and unsettling and unpleasant. <laughs> Nowhere in between. Hey, stop! I found these fossils. They're both mine. Look at that Grimer. Honestly, less cute than the Grimer in blue. <laughs> Maybe more on model, but... Lacking in enthusiasm. Double teams actually abandon competitive play as all the evasion are all the evasion boosting moves because it turns the game into a total coin toss. Oh, interesting. You dare confuse the move I was just about to... Nah. Grimer. You jerk. That was like the whole thing I was going to do for him. And I probably better get Butterfree out of here. Well, the move will stop being disabled in a few turns, but Butterfree is also weak to poison, I think. Doesn't swapping remove disable in Gen 1? Does it? Now we can test it. Uh. Hmm. Swapping removes all temporary conditions. Wow, I didn't know that. Do you do be pretty good? Ah, right, sure. Why not? What is Team Rocket actually doing? Like, one grunt says they're inter that we're interrupting a major operation, but without cutscenes or animation, they're kind of just there. Yeah, no, I, I am also unsure. Granted, Geodude only knows Tackle, so I don't know if Geodude's going to be any more equipped for this. I guess Geodude can outlast, as Geodudes do. But then they did just disable the one move we have. <laughs> but... That's all right. Buys us a chance to give Butterfree a potion. <laughs> it is really funny that you can't have the one move you have disabled, That it's pretty good. Butterfree, please don't get confusion disabled so we can actually wrap the fight up. Right, y'all were. Goodbye, Grimer. Hey, Geodude learned another move. <laughs> I'm so proud. Voltorb. Honestly, Geodude, this might be you again. Yeah. No real reason not to. That was a critical hit. Boy. Poor Voltorb. Oh, that's true. I guess Voltorb doesn't have any electric moves, right? Yet. So, the birds are fine. <laughs> Hadn't considered that, but you're right. Next time. Stop missing. Yeah, gotta love that screech. <laughs> Getting a lot of levels for this Geodude that we don't really plan to use long term. All right, Butterfree, you're up. Now that is a coughing I can like.
It's just like, I don't know if any Pokemon has a more troll face expression than that. It's very happy. It's sort of, it's mildly, like, teasing and mocking, sort of like, like, hey, does this annoy you? Does this annoy you when I do this? Hey. <laughs> it's a very, very good sprite. High quality. Okay. So, first let's unpoison... Butterfree, for our own sake. And then, it is Helix time. Helix win. All right, and this is mine. Far away on Cinnabar Island, there's a Pokemon lab. They do research on regenerating fossils. Which I bring up for no reason. Stop right there, I don't know y'all's voices, but... Look who's in the game now. Not fossils, Team Rockets. Surrender now or prepare to fight. Yeah! <laughs> oh, good seeing them actually making their Gen 1 appearance. Ekans feels how we feel. <laughs> Loving the enthusiasm for Team Rocket. <laughs> In chat. <laughs> Not even rap can dampen our glee. About to use Meowth! Mankey, kick the Meowth. Ah! Pretty good Meowth sprite, too. <laughs> it's got the right energy. Normal move. Utterly ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was definitely a kick that sent me out out into the sky and going ding. Meowth has blasted off again somewhat early. The rest of the team will soon follow. Carry aware that I'm kicking cats. Now, come on. Meowth is not a cat. Meowth is a meowth. Oh, boy, coughing. Settle down. It's an actual term in anime, becoming a star. <laughs> That's great. I assume it's got to be the same actual, like, word and terminology they use in Katamari as well, yeah? Good job, Butterfree. Good, yeah, no good. This is a good sound to be stuck on while we think about what move to replace. <laughs> yes, I'll delete it. Yes, I'll do it. Stop beeping at me. Thank you. Brat beat us. Team Rocket blast off at the speed of light. <laughs> uh. Good times. 
And also, wrong way. And also, someone needs a potion. Goodness, Butterfree. Sort yourself out. You're a mess. <laughs> Thank you, Pichu. <laughs> hey, we made it! We are free of the forever cave. Anything up here? I don't remember. I should remember. It was literally this time last week. Uh, you know, for the folks who weren't here in the earlier part of the stream, in case you missed it, because this is just a great little touch. That is so good. So, we got a little Pikachu here following us around. Also, happy now. Way into us. We've become fast friends. But, uh, they do have lots of, like, little sneaky world animations for specific scenarios that you might not find, including one that I didn't know about until last time we streamed this. <laughs> And people told me, if you jump over a little ledge, but not far enough that Pikachu can follow, uh, and then you just wait. Sorry for the folks who were here earlier on and already saw it. It's just very good. He kind of starts panicking a little bit. <laughs> and I just love that touch so much. It's so cute. <laughs> it's so anxious. Like, this is one of the few Pokemon games I actually have beaten before, and I never knew this. It's so good. Come on, Pikachu. And burp, 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 burp. Burp, 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 burp. Let's go this away. I think. Nope, this away. Anything over here? I guess just grass. But maybe new friends? Nope. That scowl says no. Scowl would be a very good owl Pokemon name. Flying ghost type. Welcome to blue! More blue than Pokemon blue. It turns out. We made it to Cerulean. You're making an encyclopedia on Pokemon? That sounds amusing. <laughs> there is something about the choice of the word amusing that does still feel, feel sarcastic. <laughs> or if not sarcastic, at least just sort of like, not impressed. That bush in front of the shop is in the way. There might be a way around. Oh, we did it, everyone. Kind of disdainful, yeah, disdain is a good... Or at least dismissive. <laughs> oh, we finally made it. This feels an excellent place to call it for today. Got ourselves to the next town. We'll start making ready to get our next gym badge. Go meet Bill. All these fun things. So. Uh, I should be streaming next on Thursday, starting at 11 a.m. Pacific. So, about five hours earlier than we started today. And should be going for a good bit longer. That's the plan, anyhow. I think on average, I'll generally be streaming a good bit longer on Thursdays than on Tuesdays. And I'm very looking forward to it. Because this has been so fun. 
roll credits here for a little bit. Thank you all for joining me, though, today. It's been a great time. I'm learning a lot about Pokemon. I guess that's, you know, that's kind of like one silver lining to uh, the fact that we're going to have to kind of double up on some of these, like playing two, playing the same gen twice in a row in some places. It does give me more chance to actually like remember things <laughs> and have the new knowledge settle in. <laughs> Good news, including Fire Red, Leaf Green, and the Let's Go games, you're now half done with Mount Moon. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And we're going to remain half done for a pretty long while, aren't we? I guess Fire Red and Leaf Green aren't that far in. It's like Gen 3, right? Or was it 4? I don't remember. I want to say 3. It's going to be a good time, though. Oh, right, you asked uh, You asked earlier, how far into the remakes are we going to be going, if at all? Uh, depending on the remake, we may finish them. Because they, like, do it bring new animation in. By the way, hello! Welcome, Raiders. How are you doing? We are we are actually just wrapping up. <laughs> but how's it going? What have y'all been up to? What were you playing over there? How are you doing lately, Erica? <laughs> Got here at the best worst time. Yeah, no, I'll be, uh, <laughs> I'll be ha pa like passing you all along to someone else in a moment here, but I'm glad you popped in. I really appreciate the raid. Digging holes in Minecraft. Oh, nice. Do it just sort of like casual play or are you like, uh, uh, doing anything like specific? Just digging some holes. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a good time too, frankly. Well, thank you very much for the raid. Thanks also to Sintipur and Will and Calvaberry for the raids too. We had a lot of raids today. Goodness. Yeah, I appreciate all of you very much. Thanks for all the, like, subscribers and resubscribers and all of it. It's been a very fun time. I'm looking forward to Thursday already. Now, who's still right, uh, still going right now? Twitch, come on. You, you know I'm only looking for people that I'm following to consider rating next. Hmm. We got some good options here. Very good options. Well, you know, since we're going to be doing, uh, since, uh, Dan Jones and Dragons, uh, happens again tomorrow evening, which, by the way, yeah, we're doing Dan Jones and Dragons, another session of that tomorrow night on, over on Dan Jones's channel, for those of you who didn't know, uh, and since Barry will be involved with that as well, why don't we all go say hi to Barry? Barry's playing a new card game called Balatro, which I've heard good things about, but not tried yet. Let's go see how Balatro works. Very excited for some D&D with some very good people tomorrow. It's going to be fun. I hope all of you have a lovely rest of your evening or day or whatever time it is. And I will see you all on Thursday for some more Pokemon Yellow. Farewell! Farewell!